a dream. That dream of being in a strange place, hearing a strange voice order me to be trapped, to feel utter hostility. That kept with me. It kept haunting me. I tried to put it down and I couldn't. And as a result, my final last ditch effort, this game of ours, a way to exercise the dream. Welcome to Session Zero. My name is Stranger Peace, otherwise known as Jeff, otherwise known as Jeffrey, and thank you so much for the hype train. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Tesha. Thank you for the resubs, Tori and Chungus. And uh, Cam, thank you for the bits. And Beelzebub, it's good to see you. Grimfair, thank you so much for the gift sub to Brimstone. Wonderful. Tonight is a night of experimentation. Tonight is a night where we try collaboratively with our community to build a world together. Now, this game of ours is a tabletop horror role-playing game that I've spent the last seven months really developing. The lore behind it is still scant. I'm going to be revealing that over time. That's the stuff that's been haunting me for 20 years. But in the meantime, we're going to see what kind of world we can build together. That's the other reason I haven't put in a huge amount of lore in the book. I want to see what y'all build. I want to see what this group builds. And I'm really excited for it. So, some things to expect. Session zero, um, we're going to be focusing again on the world building. We're building a town together. We're probably going to bounce some character creation concepts. We're going to do everything we can to make this a living place. The other thing we're going to do, though, because this is a horror RPG, is be safe. Playing around with fear is fine for catharsis, but I'm not here to traumatize you, and I'm not here to traumatize my players. And so, because of that, I'm also going to be making some announcements as far as consent. If at any time you, the viewer, feel so uncomfortable or if I've crossed a line or someone's crossed a line, please take care of yourself first. That's going to be crucial. Second, there's going to be themes that will never be in my games, just as a matter of principle. I do not tolerate, uh, say, things of a non-consensual intimacy nature, if you get my drift, without going over TOS. That is never going to be okay here. Further, harassment in that same arena, never going to be okay. I generally, I generally stay away from that arena as much as I can because that's a boundary of mine. And so if you're worried about that kind of thematic coming up, nope, kibosh, it's done. The primary themes we're going to be dealing with here are cosmic evil, ghosts, some bleakness, perhaps some danger or risk or even harm to fictional characters that are children at the time of play. If that crosses one of your boundaries, please take care of yourself. That's the important part. All right. So, oh my God, more, more things. Oh, <laughs> I'm seeing you're giving a heartfelt speech and I'm just like, <laughs> uh, Karita, thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate you. Beelzebub, what are you doing? Thank you so much for the prime sub. Give me, give me, yeah, give me that. The, the Jeff Bezos money, I will take it. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't you, Graham. It wasn't you. Um, and hey, dog face gamer. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the shout outs there. Um, and oh, Raiders. What? 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 <laughs> hey, how's it going, Tay? It's good to see you. Uh, if you aren't, if you aren't already following Clever Girl Games, absolutely follow Clever Girl Games. Ah, uh, Mrs. Snarky, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. 
So without further ado, a do da diddly day, as they say. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and meet some of the players here. All right, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna unmute some folks. That way they can talk. <laughs> um, I'm gonna encourage everyone. Oh, I, I'm going to encourage everyone to use push to talk um, and to be mindful of the floor, as it were. Okay, here we are. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin with a kitten plan. Kitten plan. Uh, is that, is that your preferred name here? Uh, you're on mute, by the way. Uh, we still can't hear you. That's weird. One second. Ba -ba. Let me make sure. So this is the thing about experimental games. When you have a whole bunch of people in a Discord, sometimes audio is issues happen. Um, so while we're working with that, um, Cuddle, do you want to go ahead and take the, take the lead here? Sure. Hello. I'm a cuttlefish. You are. You are a cuttlefish. I am. I am. Um, uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I um, am actually a founding member of Team Sanity. Yeah. And, wh and what is Team Sanity? Well, Team Sanity is a group of chaotic friends who get together and showcase other uh, small streamers and their content and basically just give them some time to shine. And we have uh, a lot of new things coming up this weekend, like your... You know, your stream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may or may not be uh, in, involved in the Streamer Academy over at Team Sanity, where uh, a cuttlefish, uh, the G teacher and myself, can show you uh, some ins and outs of the streaming business and help you out in case you want to get started. So thank you. I'm very excited. So thank you for having me here. Yeah, super excited. Super excited. Uh, let's see. Kitten Plan, how's your audio? How are we doing? Is it good? Hey, there we go. Hey, hi. Uh, I'm a kitten plan. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I do not stream, but you wanted like a favorite horror. Yeah, favorite horror uh, thing. I don't know if I have one favorite horror, but I do have a House of Leaves tattoo. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, House of Leaves. The classic, the classic where the book itself is the monster. <laughs> but yeah no I, it's so scary it is it's super scary uh, good choice always good choice thank you thank you kitten plan all right next up we have my good pal my good buddy what, what should I call you oh Hold on, let me make sure that you're not muted because I'm not hearing you. <laughs> oh, audio issues. They're delightful. And now we have a rhubarb raid. Hey, how's it? Thank you so much, rhubarb. Oh my God, thank you. I appreciate you. While we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and also put on a little bit of, a little bit of music here. So... Still can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. There you are. There you go. Okay. I guess push to talk just doesn't work for me, apparently. <laughs> That's Discord. That is absolutely Discord. So what should we call you? Uh, I'm Ethan. He, him. Simple. Nice. Nice. And what what would... Uh, you can either choose a, a, an interesting fact or uh, your favorite piece of horror media. Um, I mean, I could sit here all day listing horror media that I love. I think my tops is probably a head full of ghosts with Paul Tremblay, and I will say that I'm currently reading Chuck Wendig's A Book of Accidents. Ooh. Devouring. Devouring it, just literally putting the pages in your mouth and uh, digesting. Yeah, okay. All right. You know what? That's the way to read. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, I'm excited to see what, what you do. 
And then we have, uh, we have Secret Nephew. Hello, Secret Nephew. Hello. How would you like to introduce yourself? Well, we'll start off by, yes, hello, I am Secret Nephew, also known as Fractal Rift. Pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'd say my favorite piece of horror media would probably be the Silent Hill franchise. Good choice. These are good choices. Y'all, y'all have good taste. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Secret Nephew. All right. Grim. Hello, Grim. Hello. There we go. Let me, let me, let me bump you up here. Uh, how would you, uh, do, do you go by Grim, Grim Fair? Uh, Grim or Grim Fair either works. Okay. I've been Grim Fair almost as long as I've been alive, so. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, um, when it comes to your favorite piece of horror media or an interesting fact about you, uh, what do you think? I think my favorite piece of horror movie is Puppet Master. Puppet Master. Wow. I, I, you know what? The solid choice, solid choice because Puppet Master that that's an underappreciated classic. So nice. I approve again. Y'all have good taste. Um, absolutely. Thank you, Grimfair. And then we have Karita. Hello. 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 How are you? I am well. Um, I am Karita. My pronouns are they, them. I am a craft streamer by day, and, uh, you know, on most nights I, I get around to doing some gaming of some sort. Um, I, I'm i a real-life candy man. I like, I like bees, but um, I, my favorite horror... I, yeah, I'm a classic Hellraiser fan. Hellraiser. Explains a lot, considering <laughs> I, I got into surgery for a career. <laughs> <laughs> so when you walk into the room, do you go, I have such sights to show you? It's happened. I love, I love that. I love every single thing about that. <laughs> that is marvelous. Thank you. Thank you, Karita. Again, good taste, impeccable taste. I'll raise is one of my favorites. All right. Next up, we have Tori. Hey, I am Tori. Pronouns are in no particular order. She, her, he, him, they, them. Uh, I do not stream. Maybe I will. I don't know. I mean, once, uh, once I, once my, I yeah, get off my butt, yes. <laughs> and once you get off your butt, once I decide to stop being lazy, once I figure out what I want to do, um... My favorite piece of horror media um, is The Good House by Tana Reeve Du. Ah, yeah. Um, if, if it is a novel, if you want a book you have to put down and walk away from for a while, there you go. Excellent. Um, all of her books are amazing. She's a horror writer. You'll love her. Yeah. yeah. Definitely recommend Tana Reeve Du. Very, very good. I think she had a class on Jordan Peele's movies over at UCLA recently. Um, yep. And yeah, good it's stuff. Just horror uh, and specifically black horror. Nice. Nice. Thank you, Tori. Appreciate it. All right. And then we have the inimitable, the wonderful, the absolutely just charming. No, I'm Dinosaur D3. Ange, how you doing? Um, I'm good. Also, I did not know this would have the same amount of pressure as, like, showing up to class with no pants on. Oh, no. Uh, so... Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I'm Ange. She, her. I just kind of vibe and do whatever. Lots of things. Nothing too interesting. But, um, I, d I don't have a favorite horror because I pretty much like everything spooky. <laughs> so... When people ask me this, say, well, what's your favorite horror movie? I don't have one. But my favorite my favorite movie is um, Jurassic Park. And I think that's a horror movie. It is. It, it's special to me. So. Oh, man, Jurassic Park. I, I saw that in the theater 
and like I did my best. I remember like gripping my seat as if I were going to eject from it, and my my father looking at me and going, "You all right?" And I'm like, "I'm fine." <laughs> so absolutely, uh, I'm right there with you uh, with Jurassic Park, and also you're doing great, Ange. So no pressure. You're all good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ange. And then we have Pat. How's it going? Hello, how's it going? It is going very well. Uh, can you uh, tell us your uh, how you want to be referred to, your pronouns, and your favorite piece of horror media? Absolutely. So I'm Pat. I use he, him pronouns, but they is also perfectly fine. And uh, I am on a podcast called Gaming Fix. I don't really stream much personally, but if you're looking for something to listen to, uh, and then... <laughs> yes. Oh, we, we're having some, a little bit of audio issues, but in the... in but, There we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, apparently, the push-to-talk key that I selected does something to uh, my whole computer that i didn't know <laughs> so my favorite piece of horror media is uh alien it's my favorite movie oh. um i like a wide range of horror stuff but that's the one i would have to say oh, it's my favorite. yeah alien is so good i i adore that movie um it just the pacing and the timing and the the sets and the lights oh my god i could go on so good it's perfect it's perfect it's perfect and uh, i will also second uh gaming fix if you want to listen to some really cool people talk about some video games and everything else under the sun absolutely check out gaming fix at your local podcasting client please give it a review if you do listen <laughs> I, I appreciate it. <laughs> look i gotta shout you all out gotta shout you all hopefully, out hopefully you'll be on the show again very soon. i would like that <laughs> full disclosure i am also a guest <laughs> And did the music. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did, didn't I? <laughs> that was fun. All right. Thank you, Pat. All right. Jess, how's that mic of yours? Are we are we up? We're working on it. Okay, we're working on it. Um, I will oh wait. I haven't heard you yet. Okay, uh, we will we will come back to you absolutely until the audio stuff gets fixed, because you can't have a stream in Discord without something happening. It's a law. In the meantime, Skillsy, hello, welcome back to streaming. <laughs> You're back on a camera. <laughs> You're also muted. Let me make sure that you're not like muted by me. No, I've been muting myself because I'm uh, the video is actually coming from my phone. So push to talk is not really a thing for me. Uh. <laughs> uh, so I'm Skillsy uh, or Lynn, whatever you want. Uh, I'm essentially 16 assorted scavenger species, opossums, raccoons, that sort of thing stuffed into a really intricate trench coat. And as such, my favorite piece of horror media changes minute to minute. So I decided uh, to be a little bit extra and go with, in fact, my first favorite piece of horror media, which is sort of relevant to our material today. Oh, wow. Is that the scary stories to tell in the dark treasury? It is with the original artwork. With the original artwork that if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, that basically- you want to be upset. That, that haunted your dreams. Just right there. Stephen Gamel and uh, yeah, Alvin Schwartz. Well, Harold, let me know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look <laughs> but welcome back to stream uh thank you so much skillsy thank you yeah all right and next up we have tall kendo tall kendo how's it going hopefully we can hear you oh looks like the audio issue has returned because discord is a lovely, it's a lovely platform. I love it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come back to Alkendo. Um, come back around and we'll figure it out. It is all good. All right, Chungus. Chungus, are you there? Hello. Hello. How you doing? Awesome. 
Good, good. Uh, so uh, how should we refer to you? 2% Chungus? 2% Chungus? Or Gus? Uh, any combination of permutation or of those is fine. Uh, any pronouns are also fine. Awesome. And your favorite piece of horror media? Uh, my favorite piece of horror media is Karita walking into the room and saying, I have such sights to show you. <laughs> <laughs> With the video game Soma taking a very close second place. Soma's very good. Soma is so very, it's, it's one of my faves. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. But also, if there was just a game that was literally two minutes of just, you know, walking in the room, I have such sights to show you, and then credits, um, I would give that game two thumbs up. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Chungus. Okay. Next up, Moth. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. The oh. button. I missed the button. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, should we refer to you as Moth or anything else? Uh, you can refer to me as Moth. Mothy. I'm used to both. Um, my pronouns are he, him. And my favorite piece of horror media, I'm going to have to agree with Pat here and say the alien. But I like the alien game, even though I did make Rip Ripley sit in a locker for at least 25 minutes because I was scared. <laughs> you know what? That's relatable. That That's some relatable feels. Um, <laughs> because I also would sit in a locker because I was scared because there's a whole, there's a whole xenomorph over there. Oh no. <laughs> Gonna be honest, didn't even make it to the flamethrower. You know, I, I, I didn't either. I didn't either. So solidarity, you get a, you get a, you get a fist bump. Um, so excellent. Thank you, Moth. And then we have, let's see if the audio is working here. Sycamorely. Are you there? Give us a sign. Am I here? You are here. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> All right. Uh, what should we refer to you as? I think Sycamorely is good. Okay. And my pronouns are she, they. And I live on an old family farm. And there's probably lots of ghosts around, but they are my family, so they seem pretty nice. Okay. All right. And um, horror media, I am a novice, let's say, but I really liked Garth Nix's um, Shades Children uh, growing up, and that was pretty spooky to me. That is spooky. That is spooky. Uh, Skeelzy is very much the Garth Nix person, and I need to be educated I... still. So uh, we're both novices in each other's masteries, and I look forward uh, to learning more from you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So... Uh, let's check in. Talkendo, how are those audio issues? Have they been solved? You tell me. Hey, there we go. There we go. See, it's fun. If you have push to talk on in two places, you have to push two buttons. That's really weird. <laughs> I turned one of them off. So. I'm Talkendo. Um, pronouns are they, them. Um, I do not stream, but I do dabble in a bunch of weird stuff um as for my favorite piece of horror medium it's the version of mass effect 2 that exists solely in my head where they actually leaned into the body horror of being rebuilt oh my god i that never how did that never wow oh mass effect 2 with david cronenberg i wasn't prepared i wasn't prepared <laughs> <laughs> That's that's amazing. Thank you so much, Talkendo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Skillsy says, let Talkendo redo Mass Effect 2 2K22, damn it. <laughs> all right, you listening, Bioware? You listening? Uh, all right. I think that is the whole horde. Um, now, the regular sessions obviously aren't going to be this big. We're going to be having two sessions, one on the weekends and one on the weekdays, depending on the schedule. And the idea is to have maximum flexibility. So sometimes people will be here and sometimes they won't because we are all very busy and we have lives and we got to do things. And so that's just the reality of tabletop role playing. You just got to you just got to roll with it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm reading chat. I'm catching up with chat. And I just read I will fight Todd Howard and Nacho Cheese if you let Tall Kendo redo it, please. Um, 
What? <laughs> Chungus says fund it. Great. I'll, I'll fucking do it. Don't test me. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Moving on. <laughs> uh, so we've done introductions. Uh, which means we can spend the rest of the time here really digging in. So, uh, if you have your guidebooks open, uh, turn to page six of the PDF. It'll say step zero, the town in really big letters at the top. All right. I'm going to give some folks some time to open that up. And then I'm going to switch the music here a little. All right. All right. I'll go ahead and read this out loud. And we'll go from there. Full credit, because this is a, uh, this is a hack, a dual hack. The first part that we're doing today is adapted from Everest Pipkin's The Ground Itself, uh, which is a wonderful game. Please check it out on itch.io. Um, and, it, and I'm basically adapting the framework in the question language. So. Think about the quiet nightmares you have known or read about. The foreboding universities of Arkham. The quotidian terror of Derry. The hollers of North Carolina's Appalachian Mountain Range. Or think about more personal sites of dread. The dusty and locked attic. A street that was too narrow or too broad. A shadowy figure running through a streetlight in the distance. During this phase of the game, the focus is on the place that we will be creating together. The characters will come later. The place demands to be let through the door first. We must defer. This will require of, ye, of you all the following implements. A few hours and a selected safe word. So in place of, you can either use a safe word like banana. I'm always cool with banana. Uh, but in place of a safe word, you can also just say yellow or red. When those uh, things are said, I will display uh, you can see on the screen here, the yellow card and the red card. The uh, yellow card is for material that it crosses the line and it would just be best if we kind of steered away from it. It's not that it can't be in the game simpliciter. It's just that it's best if we kind of steer away from it for right now. Red, that's a, that's a full, full stop, full rewind. This is not going to be in the game presently or in the future. So, again, take full control of these tools. I encourage everyone, uh, because again, my job here is to provide a little fear, not trauma. Uh, so, if you need those, um, and if you haven't gotten my attention somehow, you can verbalize it, or you can talk to um, Skillsy or Tori, and they can also yell at me just in case the when the action gets uh, heated because your safety is paramount and your safety is important to me. Okay, so what do I need? The storyteller. I'm gonna require the following implements, a 20-sided die, a six-sided die, and a shared online document. Well, we got one of those. Actually, we got both of those. We got all three. Um, those of you who know me know that I um, have the worst dice luck in the world. So that is why um, I use a dice roller <laughs> because otherwise it's just going to be one, 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 <laughs> literally. Um, all right. So generating the place, the haunted town we are building will be built collaboratively by all players present. The town may come all at once, or it may be emergent from other suggestions. For example, a player could suggest a place that has a vampire living on the edge of town. Someone else could say that it's a hive of vampires who surround the town. 
And yet another may elaborate that there's a legend of vampires who surround the town, but only one remains in a dilapidated trailer behind the convenience store. Multiple options are encouraged. Try not to say no to the suggestions offered, unless they depart wildly from the themes of the game. Try to build on top of the ideas offered or ask clarifying questions to enrich what is said. The action for now is going to be solely focused on the place that we are building. Do not get bogged down in thinking about other towns that are nearby. We're just focusing on one place. And it doesn't have to be painstakingly mapped out. Short and simple descriptions will be our guide here. We're gonna discover what this place is like together. Now, if things get too intense, definitely use the card system or a safe word, and we can fade to black. This should be honored by everyone at the table without question. And additionally, everyone should contribute. First thing we're gonna do, horror is burdened by time. In order to figure out the initial time scale of how many haunts happen or when the haunts happen or how long between the haunts, between supernatural activity in general, we're gonna roll a d6. And now, rolling the d6, we have a four. So that means that the supernatural events, the time between them is weeks. I cannot tell you how relieved I am that we went with weeks. <laughs> that makes it so much easier narratively. Oh my God. <laughs> so that means the kind of tale that we're going to be talking about means that between sessions, weeks will pass. I was really worried about the decades one because <laughs> that makes it hard. Uh, so uh, between each session, there will be a time, a sort of a unspoken kind of thing that says weeks. Is everyone good with that? Okay, I'm seeing nods. I'm seeing. I'm good. Okay, yeah. great, awesome. And now the big, the big, big, big questionnaire. And if you want to roll your a d20 yourself, or if you want me to roll for you, I can do so. But a haunted town takes collaboration to realize each player is going to be assigned a question through rolling a d20. Uh, again, you can make the roll or I can roll, doesn't matter. Uh, so starting in alphabetical order of screen name or first name, each player will be assigned a num number. Um, and then once we get the number, uh, you will be asked a question or you can read the question yourself, whichever one works for you. The person who is assigned the number gets what's called first pitch. They dictate the terms of what the beginning of the answer could be. After they finish their answer, we then bring it to the group and see what they think. And I'm gonna encourage everyone, try not to say no. Say yes. Say yes and. That's actually the big one. Yes and. Um, try to keep it brief, but don't be afraid to dive deep. Okay. That's enough uh, prep here. Let's go ahead and get started here. Let me look at the screen names. I think, if I'm not mistaken, a kitten plan is alphabetically first. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yes. Okay. Just making sure sound is working. Sound is working? Yep, yeah. it is. Good. Do you want to roll your own d20, or shall I? Uh, do we have the ability to roll in the chat? Because I do not have my dice on. That's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, let's see. I don't think we have the ability to roll in chat, because I forgot to set up that command, because I'm very together. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you actually have some kind of dice implement, whereas I do not. So <laughs> there, there is that, there is that. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and let's see. Getting out the twilight dice again. Okay. I'm going to roll the D 20 for you. You got a four. Four is a good number. Okay. 
So do you want to read the question or shall I? Uh, I can read it. Yeah, go for it. So question number four. Okay. Uh, describe the flora and fauna. Yep. Describe the flora and fauna. What is the landscape like? What animals and plants call it home? So what do you think? First pitch. Okay. Um, I am thinking of somewhere that people take their landscaping and yard work very seriously. So there, and they are not very good about using local plants. So like people's yards and like the, uh, like dividers on roads and what have you look super different from if you step outside of that. I'm going to say one is like they want it to look like England and the other is a little more plainsy. Interesting. Okay. So there's sort of a, a clash between the, the sort of areas of the town where you have this sort of very organized, almost regimented land flora. And then the rest is like sort of this plainsy, wild kind of overgrown thing. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And we'll go ahead and open the floor then. What do people think? Do, how, uh, what, how do we want to elaborate on that or not elaborate on that? Or are we good? I'm thinking outside of town, it's more arid, more Colorado-like. Good. Good. So it's more Colorado. Okay. That's good. Uh, anything else, Grim Fair? That's what I had in my head. Great, awesome. So we have uh, on the outskirts of town some some arid land uh, that uh, gets sort of. That's interesting because if if it's really like regimented gardens, right? That means the water has to get there somewhere, right? Uh, you know, and I wonder I wonder how it gets there. Um, what do y'all think? Any any further elaborations? He's saying that, oh, go ahead, Corita. I would like to suggest that a river runs through it, and that there is a water source, and it is plentiful and usually running pretty deeply, enough that the uh, people living in the town could uh, recreationally enjoy it. Good, good, good. So it, ru it runs deeply, you say? Yes. Okay, good. So when... Question? Yeah. Why did the trees bleed last year? Yeah. So that that's actually one of the things that I, I was going to ask is like, with with this water and with this regimentation, why why there there seems to be some kind of strange way that uh, this this land this these things are growing in it. So perhaps the trees bled. Can you say more about the uh, skillsy? So. We all heard about, um, name, mm -hmm. Mr. Winkler running through town, um, last winter when he said all of his, like, topiary trees and everything in his yard were just, like, pouring blood from everywhere he, like, trimmed them. Uh, not sap. He was very, very clear on that. Um, and the people who didn't think he was nuts, like, went with and confirmed it, but there was never, like, any investigation or anything. The town council seemed to have just shoved it all under the rug. I want to know what's... What happened with that? Interesting. Does anyone else? What, what does any, uh, someone else think? We can also bend that. <laughs> um, so there is a very stiff rose garden competition amongst some of the ladies of a certain age. And it seems that no matter what the temperature of the year no matter no matter what sort of weather they've been getting some of them always have the biggest blooms big and beautiful and very fragrant huh interesting and what do you think do you are the are the plants are the are the are the plants in the river being fed by something nefarious or are these just old wives tales what's what's going on here well if the land outside of the town is arid and dry and the inside of the town is lush and green there's definitely something going on good 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 because there's there seems to be some kind of strange happening where 
everywhere else is parched, but this one place. It's almost like the town is greedy. I can get behind that. Ethan, what do you think? <laughs> muted. You're muted, Ethan. I was so dramatic and then I was muted. <laughs> I think that's all hogwash and God put all this green grass here for us to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's one perspective then. Good. Good. So the, the perspective here is a sort of pushback and you're you're aiming towards the religious angle am i hearing that i i that feels reasonable to me that this there this would be a rift in this town that there are people mm -hmm. why would you bother to question all that good good it's not weird that the trees bleed that's just what god decided <laughs> i was gonna say the trees bled because they used the rose gardens fertilizer oh Interesting. Can, uh, can you say more? Where's the fun in that? Oh, good. So, by the way, I want to point that out. If I push you for details and you're like, no, let's keep it mysterious, that's an A-plus move. You are welcome to do so. Um, Cuddle, what do you think? So, I was trying to think more about the animals yeah. in the situation. Um, and I, I think that they're is a strange lack of animals um, in the outside town. Uh, almost like they were there but are gone now. Interesting. So like there's there's some like, are we thinking like fossils? Or are we thinking like there's like fresh nests with no birds? Yeah, kind of more like that last one. Like all of a sudden one, one day they just, they left and didn't come back. Oh. Kind of more like... Um, uh, Dr. Seuss's Everybody Left One Day. Yeah. Kind of time. Yeah, more like that. I like that. Sort of so long and thanks for all the fish. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. That too. <laughs> Absolutely. I was, I was thinking that there is a strange lack of animals as well, except for at night. Ooh, what, what happens at night? You hear them. Oh. So you hear all the, the, all the animals that are suddenly absent, but what happens if you go outside and try to look for them? You only see shadows. Yes. Some kind. Good. Good. I was kind of thinking that the one kind of animal that you do see is that there's a single herd of deer that never migrates. I love They're that. in town all year round and they never leave. And that's the the only animal anybody ever sees is, is one of is a member of this herd of deer. Interesting. Deer in a desert. Interesting. I like that. I like this. I like this. Can you um do they look like normal deer or are they somehow like look they do they look a little a little sus? They look very normal except that they seem when you look them in the eye, you see like yourself kind of reflected back at you. And it's not clear if that's mystical or if it's just that they're oddly kind of human like in in their in 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 the way that they appear when you're like give them a good stare in the eye oh this is so good guys this is so good <laughs> uh i love it um yeah an, an extra thing about the deer um so their antlers are actually covered with what looks like velvet mm -hmm. in real life um, and occasionally if they happen to maybe have a rose bush kind of appetite that they look like they also bleed a little. Oh, oh, just the, the, the subtle trickle. Like just a yeah, little ooze. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just coming down. Is, is that velvet gunk or is that something else? Yeah. Oh, I love the ambiguity there. It's so good. This is so good. Excellent. Question. I I have a question related to the animal depopulation. Okay, so I heard two questions. Um, Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, so I just want to make sure. So there's a question from Skillsy. Uh, who is the second question from? Hit me, Ange. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Um, we'll do Skillsy first and then Ange. Is that good? Sounds good. Okay, great. So go ahead, Skillsy. So there's this issue with animal depopulation, right? All these animals are vanishing, so on and so forth as far as wildlife 
are there outdoor cats? What happens when people's pets escape? Do they come back? Are they ever recovered? Is there an animal shelter in the area that picks them up? You actually that? hit on something I was just about to say. Okay. Uh, the cats don't go outside. None of the cats eat, want to go outside. They, You might get the random one that feels the urge to, to go stray, but they don't go far past the porch. In fact, they don't go far past the door. Oh. But that doesn't mean that they're not interested with outside because they will stare out the window at nothing. Good. Good. I love that. I love this. Yes. This is. And yeah. Has anyone noticed how the cats never seem to want to touch the ground? They're always on the roofs and the wires. Good. Good. I like that. They're scared of the ground. Interesting. So they're just all there, like everywhere you go, there's just like a, you, you if you look up, there's going to be some feline eyes staring at you from the roof. They never want to leave the premises of the town. Interesting. Like they're bound there. Hmm. I'd like to add. Yeah. Despite the lack of mammals and, and animals like that, there doesn't seem to be a particular depopulation of insects. Um, or pests uh, in that regard. Oh, I, I like where this is going. I like where this is going. I'm feeling the crunch. I'm feeling the crunch. Excellent. I have a question. Yeah. This is an arid environment, and Korea clarified uh -huh. that most of the sort of vanished species are animals. So I'm assuming that, like, we're talking, you know, prairie dogs and whatnot are generally not a Okay, cool, fine. Um, are the reptiles impacted? Oh, that's a good question. What and are there fish in the river? Hmm. I would. Uh, There's got to be fish in the river, otherwise the kids wouldn't have anything to do during the summer. I think maybe there's fish in the river sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there's it's, something uh, in the river only at night. And it's and For it's. Some reason. <laughs> and it's exciting there are fish in the river. I like this. I like this. Good. So I hear that. Yeah, because I'm I'm hearing what I'm hearing then is So we have it the depopulation. There are still fish, but there's a lot more night fish, there's a lot more nocturnal fish than there are diurnal fish. And that there's something sort of funky. We're not sure what's going on with the reptiles. I'm gonna pause us there. Uh Ange, what was your question? Oh, my question was back about it's okay. the deer. We can we can um, rewind. The deer, because like I I know that most of us are from different parts around the world. Yeah. Um, and I know there are more deserty type deer, so I'm just wondering if these are like clearly out of place deer, like a white tailed deer in the middle of the desert, mm. or if these are something more like a reebok or a gazelle that would be more suited to that environment. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, what do you what do y'all think? Ooh. What if it's all like almost all the species in one herd, like they're that's, all out of place? That's exactly what I was thinking too. I agree. I actually oh. have a way we could potentially. Okay, so hear me out. Yeah, we have this sort of clash going on with the flora and fauna. The 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 very the, like the we have the native species in the area, and then we have all the weird ornamentals that people are insisting on. Yeah. What if what if a similar thing is happening with the wildlife? Okay. Can you can you say more? I want I want to hear I I want to make sure I'm understanding your your question, the direction of it. So what if it's a mixed herd? Mm -hmm. What if a lot of the species that we see around in town aren't actually like native to the area? Like what if what if this herd of deer just has a random okapi in it? Like where the hell did that come from? A random okapi. That's the name of my new cover band. Um, no, I think that's really interesting because that would that would seem to feed into the narrative that we we keep we're kind of starting to build here. Is there something about this place that is a trap? It, it extracts things. It feeds off them. You know, and I think that's really that's really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, yeah yeah go ahead. 
sorry. We keep just talking about this particular topic because it's so good. Right. Um, I was thinking a very similar thing to Skillsy in regards to the lizards. Mm-hmm. Um, like animal control is probably really busy, right? Yeah. It's like people just keep calling. Like there's a Komodo dragon in my basement. How'd that get there? And like their animal shelter is really mostly lizards. There's like a random like um. Oh, what are the little alligators? Oh, it starts with a C. Yeah. Caimans. Caimans. Yeah, a bunch of caimans just showed up in my kitchen the other day. I don't know what happened. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Good. 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 All right. On the subject of random pests in house, sorry, I'm gonna button here. Yeah, go. What if? House spiders have disappeared, but tarantulas have taken their place. Huh. That would that would make sense for a desert thing. Okay. That might be that might be a thing. Or at least there's a legend of that happening. Absolutely. Good. I mean, Miss Fitzsimmons did find that huntsman spider in her bathroom at one time. Mm. And that and the the huntsman's not supposed to be there. Good. Why you kick your shoes before you put them on? <laughs> that is why you kick your shoes. <laughs> good, good. All right. Can you tell little Timmy found that tarantula in his bathroom. Mm. Uh, tarantula in the bathroom. Yeah, that's a that's that's the way to wake up. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I have a different question. Yeah. When um when animal control is called for all these things that are happening. Is it acknowledged by like the town, or is it just something that swept under the rug? Like, oh, you called animal control, but that's like a big hush hush thing, and animal control never talks about it, and no one ever hears about it. Interesting. I think we should let's leave that an open question, but definitely let's let's put that down uh, in the document because I think that could be useful for other topics too. I think there's something there. Thank you, Ange. Um, so. With that being said, I think we, we got a lot out of that question. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, who is next? Let's go ahead and go with, um, you know, there's a number there. Hello, 2% Chungus. Uh, would you like to roll your own d20 or would you like me to roll for you? If you would roll it, I would really appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Let's get the rolling on. Okay. Um, how do I clear the roll? <laughs> okay, one sec. And D20. Okay, so you got a 15. So let's see what question 15 is. Question 15. Do you want to read it or should I? Oh, please do. Okay. Is the town insular, or does it welcome outsiders? What reasons do townsfolk have for that attitude? Is it only certain groups in the town that are insular or welcome outsiders? What's going on with that? I think this dovetails really well with Angie's question. I was thinking similarly. Okay, go ahead. You have first pitch. Okay, so being... I'm picturing kind of like the Las Vegas, like you said, the water has to come from somewhere. Mm. So kind of a remote situation. Right. Good. Good. And I think it's insular, uh, like de facto insular. Not that it's not welcoming of outsiders, but much like the cats don't like to touch the ground. Mm -hmm. If you're like coming through through the one highway that goes through town on a road trip and you got to go to the bathroom, you start to pull in the gas station, set foot on the ground, then decide to just, we'll go to the next town. Interesting. Something's off here. Something's off here. So it's just something, something about the place itself tends to be insular to the point where people just kind of avoid it. Like you're going down the highway, you see the name of the town, and you're like, well, no. And there's something off about the entire land. And I think that would also fuel kind of at least the kids in town really not questioning like trees bleeding or anything like that because that must happen everywhere right because they don't have stories from from the kid who just moved in to tell otherwise ah good 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 is the aversion conscious 
Say more. I, I think it's really kind of just like, like, um, mm -hmm. like if you were to ask, um, hey, you just left town without stopping to get gas. Why didn't you, why didn't you get gas here? They couldn't put a finger on it. It was uh, like they heard something, but they couldn't say what they heard. They got a bad feeling, but they couldn't quantify it. Okay, so it's not really something you notice unless you're like actively questioned on it. I think there's a funny season, like January. They get a rash of hikers and campers that come through every year. Different ones every year, but different packed hikers hmm. and campers. Interesting. And like the, these these campers are what are they there for, do you think? I think they're passing through and this has become a more of a ritual okay that they're supposed to stop there so they do right and the town has become used to it so there's a little touristy kind of vibe-ish around that time okay okay do we so the town oh, yeah no no go 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 the town replenishes its population. It's it has to because otherwise you just end up with a bunch of inbreeding. But the people who come can't exactly explain why they're there and why they chose. They just get job offers, and the job offers are very compelling, and they just pick, decide to pick up and move from wherever they came from. And it always just seems to be the exact person that the town needs. Interesting. I also think generally, like, the people are pretty nice. And not, like, creepy nice, but just, like, kind of normal. Like, clearly this town is weird because of the things we've described and, and, and even in the flora and fauna section. But everyone there just kind of goes about their lives and is like, yeah, it's kind of weird, but... We just live with it. Like they don't necessarily come off as uh, as as um, like they're people that live in a haunted town right. in a horror movie. They just come off as pretty pretty normal. Interesting. Okay. Good. 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 So they're they're they still keep a, a vibe of normalcy on the on the on the surface, uh, despite the insular feeling and despite the fact that the town keeps replenishing itself somehow. Good. Uh, do we? Is there a Draw. Okay, so uh, two people. So I heard Skillsy. Who else? Sycamorely. Uh, okay. Uh, Sycamorely, go ahead, and then we'll jump to Skillsy. I was just going to ask, does the Rose Show draw anyone? So wasn't there a Rose competition? Yeah, that's true. The yeah, I like that. Good, good. What if it's almost considered compulsory? Oh. A compulsory rose co a competition. The really serious topiary heads. <laughs> you bought a house. That sounds house. like euphemism. Now you have to grow roses. It's not. <laughs> Good. They don't send out invitations. It's just that time of year. Yeah. Right. Everybody knows Ooh. that this is when the roses are in bloom. Oh. Yeah, I think that's really interesting too because it's like, I I, I think, I I can play with that definitely too because having lived in a town where literally there was a holiday like that, where yes there was a specific date, but we everyone in the town just kind of knew, we knew when Coast Guard Festival was, no one had to tell us, we just knew, and I think that adds a really cool layer. I like this rose competition. Thing that we're building. I didn't even live in that town, and I know when Coast Guard is. <laughs> See? <laughs> same deal. Same deal. Good. Well, I got a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so if people are sort of coming in and they just have a role that they fit into, how are people like leaving? Is there a set number of the population, or are people replaced, or do we just not ask questions about people? maybe dying, passing away, or just leaving town in general. Ooh. Can I jump in on left? this one? Did Go someone ahead. leave? I didn't know anyone left. Uh I don't think I don't think anyone left. Um 
So I think we're, uh, but someone wanted to jump in on and, and go ahead, whoever that was. On the subject of, button wasn't working. Uh, on the subject of people leaving, what if no one ever thinks about it? And if people try, they always end up right back. Like they try to leave and they second guess themselves for no reason. And they just come right back. Interesting. So that would mean like either the population would just basically either grow stagnant or it would just continually grow until they died. Huh. I think that's what Kendo was sort of getting at something along those lines. Yeah. Which is to say, nobody's leaving. What are you talking about? Right. But I, I, I don't know if it's something that's as conscious as like you go to leave and like you can't. I, I think every now and then a family will move out. But that's weird. And it's like the talk of the town for a while. Interesting. Because why would you leave? A fractal, what do you think? What do I think? Yeah. I think, yeah, people don't really think about leaving or not. And sometimes it just happens like that. But at the same time, sometimes these people leaving don't end up ever coming back. They don't ever appear anywhere else. Oh. They're gone, but nobody knows. And not even they know where they go. Okay, okay, okay. So the ones who do manage to leave, who manage to sort of push through that kind of compulsion of like, no one leaves, no one leaves they're removed somehow essentially okay either they are just they cease to exist or they forget the town ever existed good 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 i have a question yeah um going back to the people kind of think that it might be weird but it's not really weird it's kind of normal mm -hmm. um do maybe the the kids feel like it's weird and they're kind of aware of it maybe up to an age where their thinking just shifts or do they kind of all agree that it's normal the whole time Good. Or is there any point in which age dictates consciousness of the weirdness Good. i was thinking about this what if up till they graduate high school they're always like this is kind of weird why don't we ever hear from jeff Sorry, and? naming character after DM. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Cool. Jeff. Why haven't we heard from Jeff? He just moved out last fall. And we just never hear. And the adults just think it's like normal. Of course, they're in high school. They live in a sort of small town. I'm assuming we're a small town. Oh, yeah. That's remote. So, of course, they're, they're lashing out. They're angsty. That's why they're always asking questions about what's going on. Everything's actually just fine. Do all the kids see it? Or just some? A select few. Though they try to get others to believe. Okay. But no one seems to agree with them. For no real reason. I think... I'm thinking maybe all of the kids can, can see, but a lot of them don't want to. And a lot of them just kind of... Just block it out and that's where those divisions come into play is because the kids that kind of embrace it or seek to understand it are like in direct conflict with how other kids are trying to make things normal for themselves right right you know the, you have sort of the the kind of accepted kids who are who are perhaps more beloved by the town and then you have you know the kids who are like i could be in your driveway uh, and, uh, <laughs> who are at least taken like that. Sorry. I also had to work in an impression request. Um, <laughs> so gotta, gotta do that smooth segue, smooth, like a cheese grater. Uh, but yeah, no, this is, this is good. Um, and I think, I think we have a really nice place to play here because again, we're, we're emphasizing that there's something in this town that keeps, that feeds, that hungers, that I keep returning to the word hunger. Um, and it, it, 
it's like the town today. itself is an organism. Yeah, go ahead. Did you eat today? Uh, yes, I did eat today. Okay. Yeah. I made sure. I'm fixating on hunger. <laughs> yeah. No. Yay. No, I have a, a addition on that subject. We were also asking about people dying. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know if people die like normal or not, but when they do, this is one of the few places in the United States where uh, air burial is pretty common. Oh. Okay. All right. I mean, sometimes people just vanish in the sandstorms and snowstorms, too. It's normal. That, too. Interesting. So I actually want to build on this point here and reference one of the previous questions that we had about the, the flora and fauna. Yeah, go for it. Since Sorry, sky yeah. burial is more popular in this region, where are all the birds? Right. There's a yeah. strange lack of birds, just scavengers, anything, just anything bird related. Yeah. Because the, the bodies still disappear, but the, all of those things we already determined, a lot of the animals have vanished. So, where are the things that eat the corpses? Gotta get off. So, I think that's, uh, I think that's a good question, and we should hold it. We should definitely hold it if we don't, don't want to uh, sort of explore that. I like that. I like that. Um, good, good, good. Uh, this is a quick check in. Uh, we've been going for a little for a little bit. Uh, does anyone need a break? Does anyone need water? Does anyone need to take the uh, take a bathroom break? Uh, stretch. I'm to head to the bathroom real quick, but you guys can keep going because I know I'm a little bit further down the line anyway. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So I think that means if I know my alphabet, which occasionally I do. Um, next up is Cuttlefish, am I right? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Would you like to roll your own d20, or would you like me I, to... I would. Okay, go for it. I got 18. 18! Do you want to read the question, or do you want me to read the question? The question says, What local festivals or holidays does the town have? How did it get started? And what happens before and after the festival? I love how these questions are dovetailing together. That makes me feel like I uh, <laughs> somehow designed this well. Um. <laughs> well, well uh, we, we, we have a rose um, that bl blooming festival thing. Right. Uh, that has a name that I don't know off okay. the top of my head. Um, it heritage days. Say it? that again. Heritage days. Oh, the heritage days. Okay, what do we what do we think about the name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it. Sounds very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I do not like it. Thank you. <laughs> Literally a and thing in my hometown. Cringed when oh, you said God. it, so it's got to be good. Nobody who visits really knows why it's called that. Like, none of the people, the tourists who come, they just are kind of like, yeah, it sounds like it could be a flower festival, sure. Good. Um, ooh, what if none of the townspeople know why it's called that? They just all go along with it. Yeah, they would go along sure. with the ignorance. Yeah. What were you going to say, Kyle? Um, I was, I was going to answer the other parts of the question. Yeah. Um, Nobody knows how it got started. It just always has been. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously a lot of social gatherings of those particular age of people mm -hmm. that do the things um, to kind of be friendly, but kind of also scope out the competition beforehand. Uh, and then after the losers... Um, destroy their crops so to speak because they are probably less than pleased with their performance okay um, can i add one more thing though and say that the whole festival is um run by the significant other of the person who leads the town 
Ah, good, 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 good. Question on that. What was that? A uh, question on that. Too. Yeah. Man. Um, what's the preferred method by which they dispose of the uh, the losing specimens? Violently. <laughs> <laughs> Violently. Oh. They become the fertilizer that is used for the next year. Interesting. Interesting. Ooh. Yeah. What if the losers they can't use gloves to rip out and destroy of their roses? They have to use their bare hands and get cut up by their own thorns. Ooh. I don't That's think so they metal. Have to, but everyone seems to. I like that. Yeah. Because we'll... um yeah. twenty-three years ago there wasn't a festival and something happened. Oh, the grand interruption. Yeah. Good, good, good. What we happened? don't know what that was, though, do we? I don't know if we do. I mean, nobody talks about it anymore. Right. Right. But we do know that the trees bleed. And we know that when the, when the trees bleed... The, oh, here's a good question. When the trees bleed, is it because you did the festival right? Or is it because you did it wrong? What if I, have a, I have a possible way to tie some of this together. Yeah. Because we have this river with these mysterious, only sometimes fish, yes? Yeah. So what if, Ooh. always, two weeks before the Rose Festival, the Heritage Days Festival, there's fish in the river? That's how we know when it's going to be. Okay. And what if 23 years ago there were no fish because the river dried up? Oh. That's a Love problem. It. Yeah, but nobody can seem to remember whether the trees bled that year, so we're still not sure what that means. Good. What if... So, the we talked about roses from the festival, whether they're the winning or losing roses, being used as fertilizer, correct? Mm -hmm. So, what if the trees that tend to bleed usually around the time of the festival happen to have been planted say 23 years ago uh, there wasn't fertilizer for a year good 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 yeah there, i think there's a, a wonderful connection you all are drawing here between the the fertilizer the river 23 years ago and the trees bleeding i think there's a beautiful symmetry there that I think could really work very, very well. I'm, yeah. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to take as many notes on this as I can in the Google Doc. I think I missed something. I have um, 23 years ago, there was no festival. The riverbed was dry. Um, and I missed what Pat just contributed. That's okay. I can type it in. I can add it myself. Okay. 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 Thank you. Steve, this is by y'all, the golden people. Because. <laughs> Yep, collaboration. Good. So, is the Rose Festival, is Heritage Days, that seems like a pretty, uh, well, I actually, I don't know plants that well. Um, folk, I know that there's a, a lot of plant heads here. When do roses bloom? And do they, is it like a, are, do, do the, the roses in the Heritage Days, do they bloom in season or do they bloom just way off season like, unacceptable well that was going to be well, my question is when that they bloom year round okay. yeah okay well, Ange, go ahead sorry yeah. um that was going to be my question to you is if they bloom like are these realistic roses because like here personally in life uh roses will bloom sometime between may and july depending on the type of rose but i don't know if that's going to be necessarily what's happening in the place that this is fictionally so good well, we we established earlier if we want to keep that we don't have to um, but we established earlier that for some reason the roses bloom year round okay correct has yeah. a thing to say yeah right and depending on what kind of roses they are they can bloom as late as november oh i have roses that bloom and just keep going even when it's snowing wow 
So that gives us a lot of opportunity to even play into reality for how these are blooming and when. Interesting. I think that also feeds back into the mismatched things of like the deer colonies and the reptile population. Because if we have all these different kinds of roses, then theoretically, even in real life, we could have roses that bloom year round. Right. I have a question. I have a question about the roses. Oh, go ahead. I also have, I have a question about the roses, but about the festival with the roses. Yeah. Okay. How are we, I have a question how, about the plants themselves. You go ahead. How do we judge the like winners? Like, what are the criteria? Is it like color, or is it size? Is it how like how, what what it what makes the winner the winner? Right. Well, that's the uh, the committee. They oh. decide that. The they committee. have their own point scale. The committee decides. Okay. The committee knows a quality rose when they see one. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's it's done by a kind of uh, tribunal of, of committee. Interesting. Huh. This is great. This is wonderful. Oh, I have a wonderful Do idea. Do we know who's on the committee? Oh, who, uh, who is on the... So, I think that question is very important. Real quick, Cuddle, get uh, share your idea, and then we're going to return to who's on the committee. Um, the the individuals who who are the most aligned with the uh, let's not talk about it ness of the town might be like runners up pretty often, while people who are not have a tendency to not perform as well. Are they, in fact, like prominent community members, or does even the town know who they are? Is it like a shadowy cabal? Oh. Oh. Interesting. I love this idea of a shadowy cabal of rose judges. <laughs> so do I. I thought you said rose judges. Do not duchess. enter the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How are the roses incorporated in the sky burials? All right. Ooh. All right. Good. Good. And are the roses ornate. on a single plant all of the same species? Or are the roses themselves weird? I wanted to draw on that. I was thinking, what if the town, while it had normal roses, what if the town had found out a way to create a special all-year-round blooming black rose? And no one knows how it got there. It just was. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You are properly creepy, kid. I like it. <laughs> Do they place a single black rose in the mouths of the buried? Wrap the tongue yes. in thorns and just wait till it blooms. Gotta pay for it, though. Yeah. Ooh, what if those who can't pay for the black rose in the mouth, what if they get their arms wrapped in thorny branches? Of right. the roses and the rose bushes. All right. I don't know. I think that would be an abomination. I think that it's the town responsibility to make sure that everyone receives a proper burial. <laughs> Unless they've done something horrible. And is the purpose of the rose and the burial Who as an offering done? or as a ward? Ooh. Right. Is it an award or is it is it an acceptance? That's a that's a good question. What if no one knows, they just know it should keep them, not the dead person, them themselves, mm -hmm. those alive, safe. They don't know if it's a ward or an offering. They just know it'll keep them safe. Interesting. Okay, so yeah. what if we go Edgar Allan Poe on this? Mm -hmm. And it's not that anybody specific places the rose in the mouth. It's when the sky burial happens and everybody goes away. If you come back the next day, there is a rose in the mouth. Like it has grown there? Oh. No, like with Edgar Allan Poe, there was somebody who would leave roses on his, there was a mysterious woman who would leave roses on his uh, grave. Nobody knew who it was, but she would show up on his birthday and leave a rose. And so, for the record, I love your thing way better than what I said out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was more out of like, <laughs> oh. yeah, no, this is this is getting good. This is this. I mean, y'all, y'all are killing it here. Um, I do have one knows thing I wanted to check on. Yeah, no, nobody really knows who's placing the rose. Mm -hmm. So, 
maybe it does grow. Nobody's going to pull it out and check. What does the town think if someone doesn't have a rose the next day? I don't know if it's ever happened. I don't think that bears thinking about. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody talked about also that. though since we are playing with themes of sky burial and things like that i do want to go in in between sessions and make sure that nothing we're doing like has any bearing on any extant right. um ceremonies things like that yep so yeah and that, some of this i will let folks know if if i if we need to change something yeah good idea yeah this is this is a really good idea and i think this is um something that i, I think we're all really good at mind uh, like I said, I, I may have like scouted you all. Um, <laughs> I, Ooh, what I, if on the subject of no flower, no flower bear, there's no flower. Oh, what if it's only yeah. been one family that has ever gotten it, and it was their, it was their son, but they don't know why. They just don't speak to them anymore. They're still prominent in the community, but no one speaks to them. Hmm. No one knows why, but they just don't speak to them. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Wait, I need to clarify this so I can write it down properly. Yeah. One family had one son that didn't have a rose show up after the first night. And so that family is being ostracized? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pause us on this question because like we like I love how much you I'd like the ball you all are running with it <laughs> it is marvelous i i it's just yes this is perfect um okay so let's see uh i was as we did cuddle and i know my alphabet so ethan i think you're next i, th- I think that's right uh do you want to roll your own d20 uh i have a d20 here okay That was too dark, so I couldn't see it. <laughs> That's a 16. All right, 16. Do you want to read the question or should I? I'll let you read the question. Okay. What corporate or government influence is there? How does it change or not change the town society and, and institutions? If it's government, is it state or federal? All right, you have first pitch. Go ahead. Uh, I think going back to this idea of the shadowy cabal that judges the roses, I think that's the government influence here. Okay. Um, and the question of whether that's state or federal level is one of those things that we just simply don't discuss. It is the council. That is, that is who we follow. That is who you need your permits from. You have to find one of them. Not that anybody needs permits. (laughs) Good. Good. Uh, Very, very, very good. All right. Some of the deer have um, trackers on them. And sometimes scientists come. Scientists, like maybe from a sort of distant military facility? Um, and also, do the scientists get to leave? Oh. They're escorted in and out. Escorted? By who? Black suburbans. The highest committee. The highest committee leader, maybe? In black suburbans. <laughs> what if um instead of a like top secret military compound style we go with a small branch of a university where there are scientists trying to understand why the flora and fauna are so strange here um and so they've sent like plant and soil scientists um just to kind of have a small uh lab some mm-hmm etymologists perhaps to uh really kind of understand why the bugs and and things like that seem to be okay but the mammals and the fish and the birds are not good good i I like that 
those grad students never last very long. Oh, <laughs> I felt that in my heart. I bet they have a really bad run of luck too. Like they're probably their funding is in trouble because yeah. things keep happening that beggar the results. Oh God, this is a night. Okay, I'm already scared. <laughs> I could just no. made that too real for some of us. No, that's good. That's good though. It's so good. It's so good. Huh. <laughs> the, the mission in the, in the chat goes right in the feels. <laughs> oh man. But no, I, I like this idea of the graduate student and that they're somehow like, even when you're under kind, some kind of protected or escorted influence, when you're studying this kind of thing, it drains you of luck. It, it ruins something. It comes in and it almost, uh, another verb that comes to mind here is crumpling. Like it crumples your potential in, in like it's throwing it away. I like that turn of phrase. It drains you of luck. Yeah. Not like luck. Things just start going wrong for you. Right. And maybe that's tight. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm really sorry. I'm going to derail us for just a second. Mm. Um, I would like to draw everyone's attention to the chat um, and the wonderful, um, oh. inimitable, let's be honest. Yes. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to be dropping a link in the chat uh, that leads to a fundraiser um, seeking to support Let's Be Honest and their family. Yes. So take a look at it if and when and you get a chance. So recently, so Let's Be Honest is also a member of Team Sanity. Um, and recently suffered a family tragedy, and we're doing our best to try and raise money for it, let's be honest. And uh, if uh, when we, <laughs> BRB got to cry. <laughs> Look, we really care, right? That's what we do. Um, so if you have a spare dollar, uh, or even if you don't and you just want to spread the word, uh, we'll be uh, posting the link. Skillsy will get, in, get there. Um, and yeah, so... But thank you. Thank you for drawing that to my attention. Uh, attention is basically going everywhere at once here. Um, so it drains you of luck. It drains you of potentiality. It dra the town drains you. Uh, things start going wrong. And then someone uh, was going to elaborate on that. Or I hallucinated it. You hallucinated it. Okay, that's cool. I had a thought, but if somebody else had one, I don't want to jump on that. Okay. Have your thought, please. Yes. Uh, it, it drains you unless you buy in. Good. There's that census taker that came through a while back to find out why the population was so consistent. Now he works at the soda fountain. Good, 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 good. So the, the lack of questioning isn't just some kind of invisible field in the sense of like, you know, I don't know what's happening to me, but there's also a sense of like, if you start questioning, things start going wrong with with your luck that's kind of where where i'm here what i'm hearing is that the direction we want to go yeah i like it i like it too fractal what do you think honestly i am agreeing with everything we got so far i got nothing to add okay all right just checking in just being like hello um could there be a, for lack of a better word, and it, this is my shadow on brain, sorry. It's okay. Um, a, a megacorp in town or a subsidiary of a megacorp in town, and that's what most of the jobs are? What, what, if, what if it's a fertilizer company? <laughs> I was thinking fertile. Uh, Fish emulsion. <laughs> this game of Miracle Grow. <laughs> Run by a Jeffrey Brazos kind of character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not a real suggestion. CEO, entrepreneur, born in when? Uh, <laughs> 23 years ago. 23 years ago. Um, no, that's good. I like that. So like having the fertilizer company being, being the thing that sort of lays the foundation and perhaps is is sort of the the spine to the committee's brain if you will like it, it's the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. oh good 
Go ahead. Which one of us? You. Oh, me. Uh, I was just saying that it's like the spine to the uh, committee's head. Um, where like the committee directs and guides and the spine is what connects all of that decision making through and enacts it. Question and possible modification. Um, um, let's go ahead and uh, do Tori first and then we'll do Skillsy. Sure. Yeah. So the fertilizer company is who sponsors the yearly rose competition. Good. They're the ones who provide the uh, the the prize package. Good, 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 good. All right, and then Skillsy. So, what if the fertilizer company isn't some sort of shadowy weird thing in and of itself? Okay. What if it's something that like a factory supplies most of the, the blue collar jobs in the area kind of thing mm -hmm. which is weird because this is a desert and mm -hmm. what if there's a weird amount of overlap between the committee and the c-suite okay okay I, I think i think i see what you're saying um, good, I'm, good i missed it an overlap between the committee and the what sorry uh the c-suites like the cfo the ceo cso's Right. The executives. Good. <laughs> Purple Space Cat also says, and then we encounter the most terrifying thing of all, capitalism. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if they're just called the fertilizer company? TFC. Yeah. The fertilizer company. Makes me, this makes me think that the fish that show up that hearken the festival that it's some sort of spawning event yeah yeah like um, it, like it's a mass spawning event is this one of those companies that dumps their waste into the water supply of course <laughs> is there it's been very thoroughly filtered um, not openly i don't think yeah not openly no I was going to ask if this is a, if it was a mass spawning or if um, this was someone like a repopulation dumping for the town. Oh, can you say more about that repopulation dumping? That's an interesting idea. So um, like certain types of fish get bred for things, right? And when they reach a certain age and can no longer breed or can no longer provide use in that way, they'll take them to the river or wherever and dump them to live the rest of their lives. Oh, okay. So it's part of a redistribution. Okay, yeah, no, I, 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 that's interesting. What do y'all think? Go with sense to me. Fish poop is an excellent fertilizer. Yeah. But again, water in the desert. This is very strange. Yeah. Are we on an artisanal well or something? Artesian well? Yeah. I feel like there should be a lot of eels. <laughs> Desert eels. I'm instantly disturbed. Say oh, more. Eel. That's eel the name of name. high school team. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like eels fit right into this weird stuff because um, eels are weird and nobody knows how they come about anyway, so... I was just going to say, are we doing eels or more lampreys, lampreys and hagfish? Oh. Oh. Silly things you could do with lampreys and hagfish. Eels Why and not both teeth. birds. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that, God, that's so upset. I'm, I'm, so the mental image in my mind is you have uh, these, these young children with banners and they're coming down to the river shoreline, the impossible river in the middle of the desert. And it's, it's, it's the day that we know that the Heritage Days Festival is coming. And they're, and they're seeing these lampreys come out of the water, just undulating with the river current. And they're cheering the lampreys. And they're cheering the eels somehow. And, like, it's both absurd, but also, like, it kind of makes me nauseated. And I'm, like, I'm kind of, like, this is interesting to play with. So thank you. Well and you can make it super gross because uh, lampreys and hagfish ooze nasty, gooey shit. 
uh, they're very disgusting animals. So, and if you like touch them and hold them, they slip right out. It, think of it like the ultimate lube. That's utterly disgusting, and I'm never ever interacting with a hagfish. It fish is lube makes me upset. Real. It's so gross. <laughs> I I suddenly like feel a lot crazy. like uh, Chunkus's uh, avatar there. I mean, that that expression is is exactly where I'm at right now. Come for the horror role play, stay for the education. Um. <laughs> stay for the fish loop. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ethan. Come with the mega three oils. <laughs> I'm sucking the multiple people's no. <laughs> is there a ritual, like? cleansing in the river after heritage days or as part of heritage days that would all this slime going on that would seem to make sense actually okay what if that's what the yeah. losers wash their hands off with? A alex what's up or uh, grimfair oh i'm sorry um i'm thinking if you're going to put hagfish and lampreys in you know two weeks before the festival or whatever mm -hmm. then that's what's decimating the fish population mm. and why after the festival there's no fish because the lampreys kill them all okay good the good fish take a while to come back because i'm sorry i got this in my head i got the, the kids have to go fishing during the summer you, the kids have to go okay so the, the hard boundary kids have to go fishing during the summer so that's really that's really good because well what that does is that even if we add a supernatural twist to that, we just got an official narrative because that that's beautiful. Cause like, no, the fish aren't disappearing strangely. It's just due to the lamprey and you shouldn't question us anyway, because it's necessary for the health of the town. So I, I like that. I like that. That's good. So since we're still on the topic of the government. Yeah. So what if, we know how there's multiple community members, right? Yeah. So what if we don't see them all? We only see one of them ever. And it's always the one speaker that we see. And there's always mention of these other committee members, and they have supposedly existed in previous texts, but we never see them. And we don't acknowledge their existence. We just know that. They are there behind the scenes. Interesting. Good. Good. What do y'all think? Yeah. One committee member to speak for them all, and the council doesn't need to address everybody. They have their speaker. Clever Girl Games says questions are for kids who don't like life, and I think that hits that button. Good. There you go. All right, good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next topic. Y'all are killing it. How are, how are y'all feeling? Do you need a stretch? Need a water? Okay. I think everybody should take a minute to hydrate. Yep. Hydrate, breathe, hydrate. Hydrate. I think I might step away for like two seconds, but I'll be back. Yeah, go ahead. I grab more water, but Same. I can hear you. Hydrate before you die. Hydrate. Ba -da -da. All right, yeah, I'm going to just get some water, too. Do it. Do it. And chat, be sure to do so as well. Oh, hey, welcome back, Chungus. We are doing a quick hydration rest break here. Um, actually, uh, I meant to ask you, Pat, because I, I can never remember. So you're, you're on the West Coast, so it, it's mm -hmm. still, uh, it's like 6 o'clock for you? Yep, 540 right now. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I'm like getting the time change in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have pizza on the way. It'll be here very shortly. So oh. when my camera goes off, you know what I'm doing. Oh, you know what though? You're you're better than I was. There was a rather infamous stream where I um <laughs> I literally stopped everything and I just like ate pizza on camera for like two minutes. And like yeah, I didn't I, e for that. I didn't even like 
like warn anyone. I just did it. <laughs> I have very... my cameras off right now. <laughs> it's a good day. I have very little shame, but you I will not. Your camera, camera off. But they weren't you like also pretty high. Um, I wasn't gonna mention that part, but yes. <laughs> you were dealing with some tooth pain, and you had taken some tincture to help with the tooth pain. Yeah. And, uh, you thought you turned the camera off, and then went whole fucking ham on a slice of pizza, and it was glorious. It was a cookie monster of a time. I believe my excuse at the time was, oh no, I thought I paused reality. Yup. And, yeah. So, whatever you do, Pat, or anyone in the chat, or anyone here, you're never gonna get there. Because, you know, you're every, everything you do, it's going to be better than that. <laughs> so, you're good. <laughs> Sometimes you got to smash on a slice of pizza, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good pizza. It was very good pizza. So. Yeah, I think I bought you, like, some buddies or something. Something that you really like. Yeah. It's true. Talkendo. Hello. How how is your uh, yes. your okay? Good. I'm I'm like like mildly paranoid that your audio is gonna randomly disappear again. But I'm glad it's not. I, I think it might, good. but it hasn't yet. Good. 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 <laughs> it's trying, why is it so dark? Um. Oh, your your exposure. That's why. Oh no, um, hmm? the LED lights mm. around my room, Yeah, I was trying to figure out why they're so dark and that's because I had um, somehow managed to turn them down a little bit. Oh, so I turned them up and I'm like, oh, <laughs> well now I can see what I'm writing. Hey, there we go. I have to adjust my, my other light Nice. because then I got overexposed. For the people who are here, uh, are, is there anything you want to shout out, promote, uh, congratulate, celebrate, anything at all? Well, I don't know if I'm actually like promoting like myself, but <clears throat> I am going to have a fun time birthday stream coming up, but yeah. I don't. It'll be on the twenty fifth. I'm gonna stream on a random on on my birthday because otherwise I'll forget to actually do it. <laughs> that is the mood. That when is, is your mood. birthday again? On the twenty fifth this month. I'm gonna do a birthday stream. We're gonna do games and things and possibly a giveaway and donations and fun stuff like that. Hopefully, it's gonna be super cool because Tesha's help helping me and Tesha's super cool. So, you know. <laughs> we should talk because uh -huh, I was planning uh -huh. on streaming on my birthday too. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is amazing, and I love this. Let's go. <laughs> so we could uh, we could back to back it. <laughs> Aren't your birthdays like a day apart? Yeah, I'm the 26th. We have so many Aquariuses. Oh God, so many. So many. But yeah. I don't even know if I exist, let alone am an Aquarius, so that's fine. <laughs> well, you don't currently exist, and All we see is your background. That's because I'm stuffing my face. <laughs> that makes sense. You showed it okay, I'm a five-year-old and can't make up my mind. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening, but I accept it. That's my job as a storyteller. <laughs> I changed my mind and I'm going to use the bathroom before we reconvene. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. That's also sort of the story of your existence in this house, Jeff. Yeah. You don't really know what's going on, but you accept it because Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You live with chaos goblins. That's yeah. what happens when you have chaos goblins in your house. Woo! I love my chaos goblins, though. Chaos Goblin Squad. Hashtag. You, you, it's yeah. It's either fight against the chaos goblins or accept the chaos. Yeah, and I love y'all, so I'm like, no, oh, accept it. That's what we do here. Mm. 
but okay. Can I can I just say this is already giving me like murder roses, Stepford wives, gross <laughs> science, like like this is already so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like like the best way. I was going full on the burps. Yeah, the burps. Yeah, with Tom Hanks. Yes, the burps. <laughs> It, it, I was getting like the burbs slash um what was the name of that freaking town that uh Edward Scissorhands took place in? Edward where everything was very the same. Scissorhands land? Yes. Scissorhands, Scissorhands land. <laughs> <laughs> it works, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's what also, Ethan, I am I am so glad you are part of this because I have missed your terrible jokes so much. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I don't know that I've made any I don't know that I've made any terrible jokes yet. They've all been very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 uh I, I have missed the amount of cringe that can happen when, when you and Jeff are in a space together and and it's great. It's wonderful. I mean, we still do that. We just do it in private chat and we don't. I, I know. I just don't see it. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like it used to be, you know, live in person. And now it's 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 in your chats and we just get screenshots. Grandpa, no. Yeah, see, like, <laughs> we can, we can do callbacks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. Uh, cuddle. Um, this I'm you, you all. I hate so much that you, I said what I said. You all are. I love that you said what you said, and I have thoughts about it. Yeah. Oh God, it's like it's just enough fun. It's like just enough actual real science to be the worst. I mean, nature is horrifying. It like, really is. Real nature here. is brutal. It is. I, I mean, yeah, no, but na nature is terrifying. Having having known Skeelzy with the the rodent breeding and and Karita with the beekeeping and and the and the butterflying and because Karita is also a butterfly rancher. Um, and it, like having seen what animals will do to each other just for shits and giggles, like for funsies. <laughs> no, is there any real horror that is that is that is stronger than that of nature itself? Yeah, yeah. Several times I have seen like pigeons and sparrows and seagulls like cage match fight over discarded chicken wings. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's even birds that will like break the legs off their victims and like keep them captive and feed them and keep them alive until they're ready to eat them. Dang. Yeah, <laughs> and someone who has chickens scary. <laughs> and raises chickens. Um, chickens are terrible, terrible mini dinosaurs, and they will absolutely cage a sparrow and pick it apart to the bone. Yes. This is all Maybe perfect. Yeah, that zombie that was us. fungus, the one that turns ants into like little zombies. Oh Cordyceps. Yeah. Oh, people want to make coffee out of that. I know. I don't understand I why. Should, what? <laughs> yeah, there is Cordyceps coffee out there, or or coffee replacement. Yeah. And and I'm like, do you, do you want brain mushrooms? Because that's how you get brain mushrooms. Kind of, how... yeah. I kind of do want brain mushrooms. <laughs> Get past the testing phase. You, I you, guess we're just gonna brain. end up in the world of uh, The Last of Us. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So, so, Especially with the panoramic going on right now. Yeah. So, so I, I may have shown that to my 11 year old students. <laughs> and and uh, I, I may have gotten a, l a little overboard with that. So yeah, it's it, they did I not think... like it. <laughs> I don't know. Eleven seems like a pretty good age for that. I I had a lot of fun. On the <laughs> I mean, it depends on the eleven year old, but I mean, like it can be pretty brutal. And speaking of pretty brutal, we should probably <laughs> move on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs>
I am I am very smooth at my segues. Um, also, uh, mission has been a uh, mission point has been saying in the chat uh, that there's a lot of hot fuzz vibes here too, and I also appreciate that. Oh God, yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. No, Educate I, the onion. What is hot fuzz? Oh, uh, it is a part, it's a um, comedy, it's a British comedy that uh, at first lampoons uh, cop action movies, but is so much more than that. And uh, it, there's a lot going on in that movie. Yeah, it, 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 it lampoons um, small town country life as well, the sort of uh, way that ever that certain members of the community uphold the way things have always been yes exactly was that moth that asked yes yes that was me i can put this very concisely sean of the dead but make it british cops thank you (laughs) yeah that is the second of of three (laughs) yep it's true um okay so (laughs) next uh next up is fractal do you want to roll your own d20, or do you want me to roll? I got a d20 right here. Awesome. Okay, so go ahead. 16. I think, uh, aha, we already did 16, so go ahead and re-roll. <laughs> four, I think we already did four. Whoa. What's happening to our luck? <laughs> Okay, re-roll. Started asking questions. The town. <laughs> Deeply. Okay, here we I'm go. Sensing Six. A theme. What is it? Six. Six. The question is, what is valued in this place? What is it known to have in excess? All right. You get first pitch. Go ahead. Well, obviously, initially, we know that this town has a huge excess of roses since they're blooming all year round. Right. Mm-hmm. And obviously, since there is an entire festival dedicated to roses, they're pretty valued by the town. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of how else to build upon this here. I think for now, I'll let that go to the rest of the group as I come up with my own stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and ask you one question. Are the thorns valuable or is it only the petals well what can be interpreted from the thorns good, good. are they used as a symbol of penance okay when you prick your finger upon them good 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 or right. are they just there are they just a part of the beauty of the rest of the rose good all right now i'll let you off the hook uh <laughs> Beauty of the rest of the rose or part of the price? Beauty and, what do you think? Yeah, uh, beauty and price. I mean, that's an interesting, uh, interesting relation there. That's kind of what I was going to go on. I was going to say, what if the petals and the thorns are valuable for different reasons? Mm-hmm. They kind of represent the gift that this town was given, but also the price that it, that it cost. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. good. What if, what if the thorns are just as valuable as the petals and are being bred for thorns because they are um, creating some sort of secretion Good. that is valuable for drugs or something? Okay, okay. So there's like a pharmaceutical aspect. Yeah, so they really don't want to get pricked by the thorns, but of course they all do, and so they're all hallucinating. Okay. Hallucinogenic roses, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, and we have we have more good official narrative. Okay, uh, what do we what do we think what of this? If it's just some of the roses. Some of the roses. Say more. Well, nobody's sure, mm-hmm. right? Because all of the scientists that show up have their luck disappear and can't ever actually find the reason. So we've got a bunch of roses that sometimes secrete something from the thorns and a bunch of roses that don't. Good. Good, good. Which ties into the grading of the roses at the festival. Ah. 
Good. Good. So. Hornless entries will not be accepted under any circumstances. Huh. Okay. I like it. I would like to piggyback on the um, medicinal properties of roses. Um, one of the things that we have not discussed is rose hips. Good. Hmm. And rose hips are used in a lot of things from shampoos and conditioners to teas to uh, poultices to right. so many things. Right. Oh, yeah. That's that's a big secondary market for the roses is they, they get sold. Right. To a supplier. Good, 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 good. The oil is anti aging. Anti aging. Interesting. I like that. Like, are we talking like comprehensive anti aging? Are we? <laughs> oh. Good. So is that like the second biggest employer in town, the rose hip wellness industry? Oh, it's Herbalife, only worse. Or is it a subsidiary yeah. of the fertilizer company? Uh, <laughs> R&D project. Uh, oh, no, no. It's a subsidiary of the parent company of the fertilizer company. Sister companies, sure. Yeah, they sister company. Competing. Called what? They're competing for resources. Ah. They're Dang, capitalism, you scary. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Maybe the townspeople call them the sisters. The sisters. I love this title. Say more. That's all I got. Okay. I still love it. It's wonderful. Yeah, may, maybe it's because the, you know, there's the fertilizer company, but the, the, uh, this other company, the, they don't, nobody really pays attention to what they're, it's not that they don't have a name. It's just complicated because they're not called the rose hip company. They're the opposite. They're like very, their name is very complex and I don't even know what it would be. So people just call them the sisters because it's easier than remembering what they're called. Okay. Nice. Nice. The sisters. This, this... I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. What is the 90s equivalent of a wellness influencer? Oh, um, uh, I'm Remedies? I'm... Anna White? Susan Ricky Powder. Lake. Susan Powder, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ricky like Lake. VHS, like, um, mail order kind of situation. Yep. 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 Cause... Oh, there was definitely somebody running an MLM around the rose hips oh yeah absolutely like i actually do use rose hip oil like in real life for real and one of the things it's supposed to do is like undo sun damage and scarring and all that kind of stuff it turns back time a little bit huh i have a question and a possible suggestion yeah go for it um, okay so the backstory was that there's like a um, the idea of the black rose, right? Mm -hmm. And that it happened and came about in the town like 20 ish years ago. Mm -hmm. um, could, since there's two sort of companies and two competing like um, corporations, could the herbal and the rose hip one be an older thing? Um, and the black rose thing be maybe a newer thing? Um, so there was already a pre existing, um, I guess maybe a naturalness to the town before but something caused it to go like really sideways with the um with the black rose interesting i'm I, i'm liking this this sort of like competition development angle here um because eating it... mistrust within the within the town a little bit exactly competition like work the, the, the difference between working for ford and chrysler right Good, good. Oh, excellent. I want to make sure I'm clarifying. Mm -hmm. Are we saying at this point then that the black roses that are springing forth after a body's been left out overnight, mm -hmm. um, are we saying that those are believed to be affiliated with a company? Or did I misunderstand? Yeah, I would say that was sort of tied to the company more than anything. 
which one the the fertilizer thing or the rose hip thing fertilizer um rose hips would be tied to an older tradition okay okay all right i wanted to connect this um medicinal rose hip thing with the the black roses from the bodies mm -hmm. and that the black roses often their hallucinogenic properties possibly mm -hmm. are stronger but also their halluc the hallucinations are often better, but you lose more touch with reality because of it's stronger. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. It's taboo like, to, touch the, to take the roses, though, because they are part of the burial ceremony. It is so taboo, but I feel like it's addictive, so that's why they do it. And maybe that addiction gets passed down throughout the family. Huh. Interesting. And have they lost touch with reality, or have they decided they found something that's more real? Uh, good. What if it's both? They lost touch, but they don't want, they don't care. They did. And I, I right, tell me if this is, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go, go, go. Tell me if this is going too far. Maybe the socially sanctioned way to access that pure hallucinogen is that the morning after the rose appears, you can kiss the rose. I really like this, but for too many reasons. But because like on one hand, it, it has that beautiful macabre like thing that I, I think would really work here. And on the other hand, you've just set me up for a perfect pun that I can torture people with. So thank you. Oh Sick God, I knew you were going to go there. I, I knew you were going to go there. I'm, oh and God. Kitten Plan was right there. Right there. <laughs> I knew it was there. I knew where you were going to go. Oh my God. Go ahead. Just do it. Just do no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, well, no. Oh, the wait. The, the, okay. Beelzebub says no. I got it. So uh, you're, you're leaning down. And you, there are the smell of that, that sort of tangy smell of rot is still there, along with the sharp, sharp, acrid notes from the rose. And as you're leaning down to give that final kiss, to see a truth beyond the, beyond the pale, beyond the curtain of what, that which you have known, to finally glimpse outside of the town that keeps you ignorant, as you lean down, all you can hear is ba ya 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 Cuddle, your face is perfect. <laughs> you're, you're, cause I, can I, can I reenact it? Cause it was like, it was like, it was like this. <laughs> it was like <laughs> I, I just lost control of my face there for a minute. It was, I was in awe of the sheer talent. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I I actually really we don't have to keep it. <laughs> but the thing is, I actually really do like the 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 kiss part, like beyond the the seal joke. Like I think I think there's something there though, because. I was trying to sort of square the circle of how one would become attached to the kind of visions of truth that you would get when you kiss that rose and imbibe the hallucinogens and finding a socially acceptable way given the taboo. And now I'm like, no, that's, that's perfect because it's very intimate and it's also at the same time a way to say goodbye. It's a it's a funeral practice that makes sense to me, uh, and uh, unless uh, someone uh, unless folks are uncomfortable with it, I think it's a cool idea. But if folks are uncomfortable with it, I'm more than happy to to just get rid of it. No, no, I'm not it. uncomfortable. But there is another thing that we need to square the circle on with regard to this. Yeah, go ahead. So earlier we established that the population tends to stay pretty stable, right? But there's a pretty consistent like group of people coming in periodically right mm -hmm. so but we also said that the you know disappearances and things like that aren't really noted mm -hmm. 
but yet we've now created the scenario where there's this funerary rite surrounding these roses, mm-hmm. which totally cool with, um, and potentially a an addiction issue and the various markets affiliated um, in the town. Mm-hmm. So obviously, if all these funerary rites are happening, then it would make sense that it's not actually the case that these disappearances and murders and things or deaths or what have you aren't, um, aren't noted. They have to be. So how is, how are we going to have them culturally? I'm actually, I, I'm going to weigh in on this one cause I've been sitting on it mm-hmm. and I think it would uh, join in with some certain things pretty well. Um, the way I'm understanding this and, and go ahead and revise this. This is not set in stone um, at all. But what I'm thinking is that, the losers like there there is there are there's losing the heritage days rose competition and then there's coming in last place there or there's coming in like the bottom 10 and coming in the bottom 10 does not mean that you, you, they don't call it dying they don't call it sacrifice they don't call it death at all what they call it is surrender a surrender to the entanglements that will enrich the root and when we're surrendering to these entanglements when we're when our bodies are bereft of breath and we are taken out to the sky for the thorns to seep into us then we have done the town right instead of failing it. So, anyway, that's my piece. Very Stop chilling. taking notes. Jeez, I, I could, I could not. I just, I, I got too enraptured <laughs> with, with this. I, I couldn't actually take notes. I had to sit and listen. <laughs> In the document, um, mostly word for word i think it's good i like it okay and it does sort of square that circle yeah and it all like all we did sort of accidentally create a couple of sub industries in the town though yeah i mean there's always going to be sub industries mm-hmm. that, that... No, i mean like a drug market yeah i mean there's always going to be sub industries <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want to um... hop in on these disappearances that i do feel I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the last part. The last part. Moth, I think you went muted. I I stopped talking because people were talking about the sub interest still, but I wanted to go on about the disappearances yeah. and how maybe some of them aren't explained away. There's no funeral, but if you go up to where the cemetery is, the cemetery, quote unquote, um. You'll find no body, but just a black rose. You can't see its thorns. It's just there. Okay. Okay. Black roses as uh, a marker of surrender. Good. So like I said earlier, everyone gets a proper burial in some way or another. Yeah. Yes. I like it. Yes, yes. Good. Good. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and move, uh, unless folks have like a burning thing, we can move on to the next one. All right. Um, This is me remembering how to do things. Okay. (laughs) There we go. Okay. Uh, Let's see. I believe Grimfair. And it's down to you. Um, do you want to roll your own d20, or do you want me to do it? We were having better luck with you rolling them. Okay. So I'll go ahead. One. And roll your, your die here. And do you, uh, while I'm getting this up, do you, want to, uh, do you want to read it, or do you want me to read it? Doesn't matter. Okay. Why don't you read it while I think? Okay. Once we get a number. Yeah. Um. Uh, 
Okay. So we got number nine. So number nine. And number nine's question is, what are the visions for the future that the inhabitants of the town hold? Is it a long or short view? Hmm. What do you think? I'm thinking there's two. Because we kind of created this dichotomy between the two corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, previous to 23 years ago, it was the long view of a immortal body through wellness and good living. Mm -hmm. Whereas 23 years ago with the advent of the fertilizer company that created a second one of um, get what we can in capitalism mm -hmm. for the short view. And what can we eat out of the environment? How fast can we turn these roses into fertilizer? And how fast can we breed them to breed better fertilizer. Good. And... Good, 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 good. All right. No, I, I, I like that angle uh, because what we end up getting is, you know, a sort of tradition versus innovation narrative that doesn't go the way we expect. I like that. Uh, what do we think? Question. Yeah. Yeah. Could we tie it to the hallucin, um, the hallucinogen sort of factor? Um, so the visions are dependent on partially at least um how people are reacting to um like kissing the rose or the older practices yeah i, I don't i don't see why why not what do we think yeah i think the hallucinogens are a new thing and by new thing 23 years or newer. Right. Right. So something happened 23 years ago that changed everything on his head. You guys are giving me so many openings and I, I just love it. Okay. <laughs> so, so are there, there are those who still keep the old ways and don't participate in kissing the rose? Mm hmm. Good. Good. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> would we know? Is that something they would do openly? Or would they just put, pretend for the show of it to stay safe? Good. I, I saw I saw Sycamore Lee and uh, either Grimfair or Pat, one of, the, one of the two there. It sounds like there might be a tension now between like the geographical growth of the town oh. and sort of that strict boundary between the greenery and the arid land. So like, how does that work? Like, does is the town physically growing, I don't know, like along the surface? Or is it having to grow in other ways? Or is it not growing? Can you, can you say more about the tension there? It's the way we were describing it, it seems like there's this this boundary mm -hmm. at the edge of the town. And if there's this newer industry which has this like capitalist growth model, then it's like where is where's where's the growth growing into? Is it I don't know, is there underground growth or is that boundary holding firm? Or is it being punctured in areas and yeah, that, those are my thoughts. Excellent. Excellent. And Grim, Grimpair, you were going to say something? Yeah, what if the town has been growing geographically, if not population-wise, stretching along the river with lots of land people are buying up to grow more roses to help them instead of just growing them on their, you know, next to their house which was the way it was always done. 
now they're buying up plots of acreage to grow as many as they can for the festival and for the fertilizer company and for the comp- the sister. Good. They just named that. Someone mentioned a geographical divide, and um, that reminded me of the one of the things Karita said: is the river runs through it. Is there a tension between the groups of people who live on each side of the river? Excellent, excellent, Chungus. Excellent, Chungus. Yeah, I have another question too. One of the first things I think, if I'm remembering right, was that you said there was a difference between towns people who had um, well kept lawns and yards versus wild kept. Lawns and yards, is there going to be a tension and a tie into that? Good. Got the land based philosophers here. Excellent. Let's go. Yeah, yeah definitely. Kind of like... Go ahead, Ann. Oh. Um, so, my in my head, this looks a lot like Western Nebraska. That's where my partner's family is from. And the way that people do like the natural yards, there is a lot of stones and little cacti and succulents and no grass, um, which I'm sure would be anathema to the people who like want it to look like the fucking English countryside in the middle of like Colorado or wherever. (laughs) Um, Good. And I don't know, maybe there's like a, a rogue group out there that somebody wakes up in the morning and their beautiful sodded lawn, like a little corner of it is a, just a lovely little rock garden. How to get there? I don't know. Maybe it was some rogue gardeners. Who can say? Rogue gardeners. All right. All right. Rogue gardening. I love it. Yeah, but like that, that could, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's absolutely a thing. That's punk as fuck. I love it. Character hook. Yeah, character oh. hook. There's one in my neighborhood. Terrorism yeah. Make it HOA. <laughs> <laughs> so the old town is on the east side of the river. That's where they grew to. It's where they started. You know, the 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 city hall is just off the river. Because the city hall used to be the, the big mill. Right. You know, because they had to start somewhere. Right. Newtown is on the west side of the river. That's where you get your weird rock lawn loving people with the <laughs> refusing to have these. They're, they're just so ugly. They're unkempt. These people who work at the fertilizer factory, environmentalists. Interesting. So you're going, you're going the way that the old ways were more extractive and that the new ways are a little bit more respectful of the land around it. That's interesting. Am I, am I understanding you correctly? Well, the, the, the old ways, it's less that the old ways are more extractive. It's more that those who are in old town are the ones who our legacy, their heritage. They okay. they have they go back generations and their families worked so hard to to make that land workable and 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 to survive in this arid land, this land blessed by God for them. Uh. And um those who who live in the expansion of town they have they they're newer they're the new families they're not the legacy and and they have these different ideas about what is responsible and what 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 their neighborhoods and communities should look like they they don't respect the work that the founders put into the town Good. This sounds like greenwashing. I mean, uh, small towns, man. Mm-hmm. The entirety of New England. <laughs> the despair in your face, in your voice, in your face. We're like, no. It makes me think of um, like 
that's the that's what the new the folks across the river say about the folks in old town mm -hmm. but the only way they've been able to like to claim this land from the arid space is through the fertilizer and that's fishy as we know haha <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> nice 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 good Good. Any other elaborations or uh, tweaks, modifications? Okay, so building off of what uh, Sycamore Lee said. Mm -hmm. um, so the company, the, the fertilizer company itself is new, but the use of fish as fertilizer is an old practice. Okay. It, it goes back, you know, eons. Um, and so obviously the the these settlers who who made this their home they saw a river full of fish and they started using the fish for their fertilizer and it was a small company until the parent company bought it out and grew it from there because they saw big profits in in this fish fertilizer that these 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 hillbillies were using okay good 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 so is it an it sounds like the the black roses though are are um they're a newer they're a newer thing so how do we make sense of the fact that roses are sort of the old town old heritage but the black roses are sort of linked with this newer phenomenon, maybe even on the other side of town. The black roses didn't start until the buyout. Okay. All of a sudden, there there was this new company with these new owners and new management, and then there's new members of the council and and new people on the boards. There's these outsiders. Are the are the sky funerals? Are which side of the town do they take place on? That's an old. That's that's one of the old ones. That's the old traditions. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're outside of the town, like way out. You don't see it when it happens. Good. The land was too hard and rocky to dig. Good. How did they find that space? Like, how did they, how did they choose it? They didn't. Have, it chose it them. Okay. Um, Maybe there's a couple of different ones. So I think the, those competing narratives are really, really good. Skillsy, you said it chose them, correct? And then, Tori, what did you say? Oh, I, I just said that I've, I I have an idea, but it's, you know, I've been, I feel like I've been sort of dominating. No, you're, you're so. it's okay. It's okay. Um, because I think you're going to get different answers depending on which community on the side of the river that you, you go for here, right? Because when... I think the old, like the, what I'm hearing is that the old sort of rose hip immortals, if we will, they are, <laughs> they're very much interested in stasis. They're very much interested in cultivating beyond nature in the sense of like, they're not land responsive. They're, they're going to, to make the land do what they want. Where on the other hand, you have the new, which is more land responsive, but unfortunately, due to the way that the, the greenwashed kind of agenda that's happening with this, especially with this Black Rose Pharmaceutical, which I'm, I'm going to advance is it's not just a, a, a mild, uh, it's not just a hallucinogen and it just makes, you know, if reality is is still you know what it is it actually does give you something 
it allows you to see something. And everything that pharmaceutical is doing is about that something. What's in that something and what wants to come out. And it's trying to, and so it's two, two types of lures, if you will. You have the lure of stasis and you have the lure of fake justice. So now I have a question for that. Yeah. What is it that's trying to get out? Uh, that one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer myself, but later. Uh, by the way, Jeffrey, I'm pretty sure you just named one of the companies. What? Because, like, Black Rose Pharmaceuticals is fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I second this name. Okay. It sounds amazing. Yeah. If, if Seal's image is not the logo or the CEO's image, like, I, I don't know. Good. Seal, like the singer. Yeah, just yeah. Logo, just his face. <laughs> I love it. But uh, the, the, the answer, I do have an answer to your question, Fractal. I am absolutely going to sort of bogart that particular part because I'm very selfish. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So <clears throat> I am not sure we have an answer to the question yet, though, or if we did, I missed it. I don't oh, which question? What are visions for the future that the townsfolk have? Oh. Yeah, we've kind of just been talking more about like town boundaries and now cool names for pharmacies. Right. We're actually answer have mostly been answering we question number three, I think. Good. Good, good, good. Y'all y'all are on we top of it. All Oops. We have also talked about like two very different views of what this future should be. Good. Like the, the future where everything stays the same and is stable and is comforting versus the future where like we're in this brave new green world. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck that is, but we're going to find out. I love the way you said that. That was perfect. The, the green world. Don't you want to be part of the green world? <laughs> I really like it. I'm looking over these questions and actually we've answered a lot of them. Yeah, we really have. But like, like I said, y'all are basically rock stars as far as I'm concerned, because I was expecting to do way more guidance. And you're like, nope, I got this. <laughs> so I'm like, damn. All right. You asked us to just like sit around and talk about creepy shit. Like, <laughs> come on. You, yeah, you got, a, you got a bunch of creepy weirdos in a room together and, 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 and gave us space to just be creepy weirdos. We're gonna, we're gonna be, build the creepy weird world we will want. And that's why. You remember I... that point when you said, oh, I kind of curated this group? <laughs> you knew exactly what you were gonna get from us. That's true. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. just, it's so much, Especially... I'm just so much more, I'm like, I'm, I exceeded expectations. <laughs> Y'all get a also raise. Also remember that time when I said, it's gonna be fine. Well, oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I was like, you allowed me in this group, the creepy kid with no outlet for creepy. I'm going to put so many creepy ideas Good. in this. Good. It's going to be amazing. Good. Uh, th that's exactly and what That is why we love you. Yes. That's why you're here, creepy kid. Yes. Insert MC Hammer music here. Do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I love you guys too. So that's this the soundtrack so far. Feel an MC Hammer. <laughs> we really are firmly in the 90s. Oh, Here we go. We are we very 90s. Can't touch and this somewhere. Battle music. Can't touch this. We're, we are already working on. We're already working on a complete merch line. <laughs> I see. So, oh. I think it might be time to 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 move on to the next one before we get derailed too much. Yep, I was a I have, um, yeah. One more thought on visions for the future that the inhabitants hold. Yeah. Okay. Um, or when they don't, uh, there is or would be a conspicuous absence if they realized that there should be such stories of people getting out of here. Like, oh, oh yeah, the, the third Smith kid um, got out of here and made it big in the city. Like, you never hear about that happening. Good. Good. Nobody goes away to college. Yeah. Why would you do that? Or if they, 
or if they do, they they wash out and return disgrace, or they're just never heard from again, or who knows what. Good. Good. There's got to be like a small college here, right? I'm thinking, I'm not going to say the name of it, but I grew up in a very small town in the Midwest, and there is a very small college there, and a lot of people just went there for a lack of imagination, really. Um. It, look up Baker College. It's fun, but it's a lot of places, so I'm not doxing myself. And <laughs> yeah, they uh, there's definitely a community college. John Weslin College. John Weslin. That's what it was called before Baker. Oh wow. Okay. So in that in that spirit, uh, I'm just gonna throw out a name, and if you guys like it, go for it. If you don't, we can come up with another one. Um, we're uh. The name that's coming to me is um, H. L. McClellan Community uh, Community Development College. Institution. Yeah, there we go. Community develop uh, Community Development Institution. Okay. It's the development that makes it Chef's Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta have that. Uh, you know the 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 whole like, ooh, this is. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, okay. <laughs> um, That's how yeah. Why would you go anywhere else? Yeah. Don't you want to develop your community? Deve- oh. Sorry, Karita. You're fine. That ties back into um, the talk that we had earlier about having uh, soil and plant specialists at the little college branch. Yeah. There. Yeah, exactly, and the, yeah, that that motivates the the uh, soil and college scientists that, or so, soil and ecology uh, scientists that are going and doing this sort of uh, research work, and the grad students getting drained of luck and what have you. I like that. Good. The committee has a deal with a larger university mm-hmm. that treats MCDI as an extension. Which means that students at MCDI can um, collaborate with the researchers and whatnot that come in from other institutions, and it this isn't just for undergrads. You can get a master's or a PhD this way, and depending on the subject. Good, good. I think we've answered number two. Yeah, what are people divided on? Yeah, I think we we I think we have answered that. Good. Okay, this is all excellent. This is perfect. Um, we're going to move on and I'm going to check in. So we've been going. We've Kratos next. Yeah. So. Okay. Karina, would you like to roll your own D20 or do you want me to do it? I'm going to roll my own. Do it. Yeah. One. Oh, you got one. <laughs> Let's name it. What is this place named or called? Who named it and, and for what reason? You get first pitch. Ooh. Glad it's not me. <laughs> I was just thinking. I'm so glad. I want to name it. Well, we'll get to you. We got to get first pitched first. I'm thinking like a Briar Glen, a Woodhurst. See, it was something with a like a plant-like name, but Good. something kind of thorny. Good, but also a little pretentious. Yeah, some a little pretentious. Yep, yep. Maybe That's something like something like Greenland that kind of suggests a sales pitch and is clearly not true of the location. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. So Briar. I was thinking yeah. actually. Maybe. Um. So, like, maybe like Briar Glen, um, <clears throat> we get. Um, Briar Meadows. Briar Meadows. Interesting. I was thinking, like, this was just like what popped in my brain. Yeah. Like a Briar Thorn Township. It's mouthy, but it fits the town perfectly, I think. Like a township name. Interesting. Good. 
Graham, Graham, what do you think? Owasso. No. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to say no. <laughs> yes, and Briarwood Township. Yes. <laughs> I've been Ooh. sitting on one for a very long time. Oh. Um, what if it is the town of Calvary, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming? Because it sits right at the intersection of those three states. Oh. Mm. Ooh, getting some state line. I sort of have a theme that I kind of want to see if we can come up with something neat out of, if that's all right with folks. I mean, like, we're, we, we've, got, we've got some names in the bank here. Yeah, but like... What would you call a potter's field for sky burials? I don't know. What would you call Ooh. it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I thought it was oh, a setup. <laughs> did you repeat the... Um, did you say potter's wheel? Potter's uh, field. Yes. Generally considered, yeah. to my understanding, to be a field of unmarked graves. Ooh. Wouldn't that just be Boot Hill? <laughs> <laughs> More. You can't more. say the quiet part. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go off like Potter's Wheel, and like maybe the mountaintop can be called the basin because maybe it has like almost a circular top that dips in. Mm. Okay. Sort of a natural impression to in which to put the body. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking because I heard Potter's Wheel and not Potter's Field. <laughs> no, it's okay. So yeah, it works. Yeah, I I really like that. I think that's really really good. And and I think even if we don't use all the all the, I, we can use all of the names we've gotten for like the county as well. So like the the name and sort of riffing off of what Karita said, uh, Briar Vale keeps coming to mind um and i don't know if that's a county or a town or a section or a neighborhood that's very goth i know right Ooh. i think it's the neighborhood on the east side of the river briarvale okay let's add a little bit of a make that a little bit of a mouthful and make it briars briars vale briars vale Briar's Vale. How is Vale spelled? V-A-L-E, because of course, but like V-E-I-L also works. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking V-E-I-L, so it'd be kind of like a widow's veil. Right. It's like well, tie in with that death. Depending on when it was incorporated, English wasn't necessarily standardized yet. Technically, both could be correct. Ope. Ope. And I, I like Pat's idea, too, of having it at the intersection of the four states. Because that, that to me reinforces the theme of gather. Yeah, I like that idea too. Yeah, like gather, hunger, draw in, keep. You're there once you're there. I think I actually really do like Briar's Vale as like the name of the town, but I, I'm really loving that idea of keeping the spelling ambiguous. Is that such as me? I mean, I like keeping the spelling ambiguous because it kind of. It kind of adds to the mystery of so what i'm getting is like there's like a hidden story of why this town is here so keeping the spelling interesting and confusing could help add to that mystery right right good in cavalry county there sits briars vale did you say cavalry Oh, I'm. I, oh my God! I always mess this up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said. Well, I just think Calvary is a specific thing. <laughs> it is. It is very specific. <laughs> you know, cavalry. Cal. Oh man, that that is. The... I was hoping you misheard me so that we could do a turn, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is that that is actually a nemesis word of mine. I, I'm like sitting here going like. <gasps> Wait. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's good. It's good because like it that could also lend to the ambiguity, right? Because it's like lots of people like uh, stumble over cavalry versus cavalry, and like having Briar's Vale 
being also that ambiguous and having the county being like, well, you know, Calvary County, you mean Cavalry County? No, Cavalry. And then it kind of goes from there. Um, it can lend some, uh, lend some authenticity to it, especially with the passage of time. Help. Yes. Are Cavalry and Cav... Are those actually two different words? Yes, they are two different. Yeah. 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 One's a place. Calvary. I was today years old. Help. <laughs> Calvary is another name. It's also referred to as Golgotha. Yep. It's the site outside of Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified. Yep. And the other one's a person I on a horse. I really didn't know those were different words. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I learned a thing. <laughs> Again, horror is educational. <laughs> um, I'm not even suggesting we need to lean into a religious horror angle with it either, but it's an interesting... Yeah bonus yeah that, and it's a cool word so yeah there's the crown of thorns there too oh exactly. yeah exactly i love this um, yeah thought since this is going to be neighborhoods um we could kind of make all of the streets or sections of it be just you know foresty kind of yeah. names that all kind of run together and it's hard to tell which one's which because they're all so similar, but they're different. Right. Um, like some, you know, Briar's Glen and whatever. Um, it might be a cool idea to have a section of the town closer to the river mm -hmm. uh, have the word brook in it. Okay. Oh, like Briar's uh -huh. Brook. And yeah, it's like something. shortened to BB for like documents. Yeah. Some, something like that. Yeah. Good. Do we, how do we feel about calling the whole town Briar's Vale and then having like the east side of the river be like the Glen and the west be the brook or something like that, like going with Cuddles, um, sort well, of playing if, on if, both nature and ambiguity? If the river is running through it and they both have some kind of draw to it, I don't think one side should be brook and not the other. Okay. It could be like a park maybe or something next to it or something connected alongside of the river on that's you know equal on both sides or if it like dips and there's like a section you know what i mean like i i would feel like it's almost unfair if they're kind of doing a little Ooh. combative what dance two streets connected by a bridge over this river that both those streets are both called briar's brook street like it's briar's brook and like it's just like a street so we could connect that idea i was actually thinking something similar uh for those who have ever visited Ann Arbor, Michigan, <laughs> uh -huh. there is a plethora of streets named Huron River. Yep. You have Huron River Drive, Huron River Parkway, Huron River Street, Huron, and, and you, you have to be extraordinarily specific when giving directions, or you end up on the absolute wrong side of town, if not in a completely other city. So should we rename the river? You've obviously never been to Atlanta. Oh, I, I've been Why to Atlanta. Everything. Um, Boston. <laughs> what if we reverse the name for the river? So it'd be Brook of Briar. Brook of Briar. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of like I, rolls off the tongue a little bit. I have a question. Yeah. It's rooted in science, but it's not gross. Um... <laughs> Okay. In <laughs> um in in real life over decades, uh rivers can actually shift and change their shape. Yep. Um and can form like branching lakes and streams. Um so since we're talking over decades that all this stuff has happened, are are you guys wanting to incorporate incorporate that into it or are you wanting to stay away from it? What do y'all think? I mean, I mean, I think it's actually a really interesting angle to take because, for example, the Mississippi's been trying to jump its banks for the last, like, hundred-something years, and it's having all kinds of weird effects on the environment. Is there are ways that you can stop it? So it's sort of like, do we want to have that in there? And then, if, if yes, do we want to be stopping it or just going with it? Because both of those come with interesting. Because we could also Maybe. incorporate that with the fish that are only appear at night as well, with the changing of the river. And um, so there's one side of the town that is all about stasis. Like maybe the river stays totally within its banks on that side. Other side, I don't know what it's doing. It's doing all kinds of shit. Maybe there's an oxbow 
that formed. Can you say, uh, like and can you say more about what an oxbow is? It's a where a river has a strong S curve and eventually um, that curvy part is disconnected from the river. Oh. Or it could be some weird stuff there, right? Yeah. So it's like the river eventually decides, hey, I'm not going to go all the way out of my way. I'm just going to cut through here now. But the oxbow, that like that S, that S bend remains. Oh, oh, what, um, what, 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 <laughs> what if <laughs> when that happened, it somehow isolated a single building of some kind away from both sections, uh, which is where some weird shit happens. But I also think that the moving of the river could make it more like, like a, it, it's almost giving it a person quality, like it, like it's an entity in and of itself. Thank you, Cuddle. Do we want to incorporate that into lore? I, it's already done. Spooky Island. <laughs> also, do we want to um, take that into account with regard to why uh, the town hall is now in one of the old factories? This is like a sweet percent. mythology part. Yeah. Maybe that's where the oldest rose garden is, too. Oh. Oh, what if this river like cut the... off this oldest rose garden to protect it, possibly? Hmm? Hmm. Like the building and the rose garden together, like the, the roses are like climbing up the entire building. So there are certain times a year where you can't even see it. It's just a mound of flowers. Good. Just so I can oh. picture it better, by the way. Um, yeah. On a scale of drainage ditch to the Mississippi, um, how large are we thinking this river is? I said it was deep, like deep, deep. Yeah, deep enough to drown in. I was kind of wondering if, I was thinking it would be interesting if it wasn't actually fed by anything. Like you can't see what it's fed by. So it kind of from the air just looks like a really long lake, but it has a current and people who are skeptical or rash think they're being rational, just assume it's fed by like underground water from, you know, a nearby another river. Uh, but nobody knows for sure. That's right. It's just uh, it's just aquifers uh, that are satellites to Lake Tahoe. Or something like, like that. Yeah. So is it like Bolton Strid? Oh. Say, uh, can you explain more for for folks who who uh, may not know that? All right. the The Bolton Strid. It's it's a very small stream mm -hmm. that goes down, but the current is so fast in places that if you fall in, you do not get out. Because the banks okay, are so steep. Yeah. Is that your thing? It's deceptive. Yes, it's it's a deceptively dangerous thing because it is so it's so deep that nobody knows how too. deep it is. But if you fall in, there it's moving so fast, and it's generally and it's it's in a rocky terrain, um, so there's nothing to pull yourself out with because it's moving so fast. You don't wash up on anything. You bounce off a couple rocks. So I'm wondering if parts of the river or something like that, that mm. no, obviously the town itself is situated on a slightly safer area, but the surroundings are incredibly dangerous and undiscoverable. Good. 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 I, I, I like the idea of the Bolton Strid, but that's just because it's like, it, it's, it's like, it's like catnip. Um, <laughs> where I'm like, un undiscoverable, horribly dangerous, very ominous and unexplainable. Yes. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> okay. In this um, little moment of silence, I kind of wanted to bring in something from chat that has been going on for like the past three questions. Okay. <laughs> it's this character named Martha. 
Okay. Um, she is as brought into canon chat by some people. Uh, mm -hmm. She is timeless. Uh, she uh, puts walnuts in her brownies and adds an extra half cup of sugar into her cookies. Um, and we all, everyone in the town hates her and she's very funny. And <laughs> Okay. Perfect. I will talk about her. And I mean, she's just so funny. Yeah, we need NPCs, so I'm I'm more than I'm more than happy to uh, to sort of get that in. Cool. Her her lawn looks incredible. <laughs> yeah, if you just scroll scroll through chat, you'll see all of her lore that me and a couple others have been making. Excellent. <laughs> it's amazing. I I will I will absolutely uh, check that in the vod. Cool. Thank you. Um, are, I had to bring it in sometime. No, no, no. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, so we've answered quite a bit. Um, and we're running out of time here, and there's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got like 10, 15 minutes left in me. I got to be up early for work. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Okay. Is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quick ask this. Is there a person who is absolutely... Like, yes, I, I haven't, I, I need to say something. I haven't gotten to say the thing. I want to say this thing. Like, it's, it's like really burning up your, your soul here. Um, I want to make space for that before I just go back to just sort of the, the normal selection process. Um, I wanted to say, um, I wanted to ask anybody in this story. It's not part of the world building. It's part of character creation. Yeah. If anyone would be willing to like, help me create a character because this is my first tabletop rpg yeah. and this is like all new to me so yeah. if anyone could help me with that later on that'd be great yeah absolutely we got you, baby. yeah got you we got you so yeah no uh, uh i think I, I think i mentioned in tigu chat that i'm like no 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 if you if you have just a general idea of a character or if you need help with that just dm me or skills or tori or anyone here and we're happy to help Ugh. I don't have a particular thing I want to say, but I wanted to see if we could touch on questions 12 and 14. Okay. What was the greatest tragedy in this place's past? And are there lo local boogeyman stories that are used by the folks who are there? The uh, S curve in the river gave me thoughts on 12. Okay, go ahead. Maybe like a massive flash flood that leveled uh, half the city. Oh. Or possibly like caught, I don't know, like a field trip in it or... Uh, some honored person or guest. Maybe there. That's why there was no oh. uh, heritage days twenty three years ago. Good. Didn't or, we say it was because the river? Or because back there wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, adding on to that whole like massive flood, flash flood. What if like tying into question fourteen? What if the locals blame it on some mysterious force and they tell like. The, their kids that if you are don't behave and you don't follow the committee's rules you, you will cause another flood so you will be actually, a bringer um, of destruction yeah that actually hits something i was just thinking about while we were doing all this river talk um because it was giving me real big uh la llorona vibes uh-huh and uh if you're not familiar with the legacy with the legend of la llorona uh, it is, a, I'm not, I'm going to skip the story. It's very sad, very tragic, um, but it is a woman who accidentally drowns her two children trying to escape from a violent man. Um, and she spends her nights wandering the streets calling for her child, for calling for her children. And if you happen to be a child who is out at night and she finds you, she drowns you. So um, I'm kind of glad that, that, uh, Sycamore Lee, uh picked out on 14 because, yeah, the, the whole river thing um, and the uh, oxbow and everything from it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was just giving me some really big La Llorona vibes. Yeah. And so I think something like that, uh, a, La, a La Llorona esque type of boogeyman for the naughty children. I wonder if we could tie it to to the the animals that are audible at night. 
somehow. Yeah, like uh, she makes she makes the sound, uh, or like the the boogeyman makes the sound to lure people out, um, or maybe that's like the thing that that tips them off. Uh, and it looks like you raised your hand real quick. Yeah, I did, and I I love the spooky ghost woman roaming the streets yes. making animal noises. That's fucking great. <laughs> Um, but I had an alternative that maybe we can fold in as well. Yeah. Um, you know how in China, when they made that big fuck, uh, like the three rivers gorge dam, I think it was, yeah. and there was like entire towns that were just drowned. And these like historic, like thousand year old cemeteries are just like under a hundred feet of water. Maybe there's a cemetery down there. Maybe they didn't always do sky burials, but they do now. Don't have a cemetery anymore. Oh. Lake Lanier has joined the chat. <laughs> you mean like Viking burials once upon a time? Like set to river and set on fire? No, like there was there was like a traditional traditional cemetery. I mean, maybe they do Viking burials too. That's metal as hell. <laughs> um, but moved? at one point, yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, exactly. Like the river moved and like drowned the entire cemetery. So now it's just under there. I don't know what it's doing down there. The piece that the river, like it was way curved out. And then the flood took that piece of land which was the cemetery that was like in that's how the island was created and that's how the cemetery went underneath and maybe the flood then emptied the river so we have both the flood and then the drying up of the river yeah. Karita? oh man I, I would like to offer up an alternative to that alternative yes <laughs> um I, I can't stop thinking about two things. First, the icon that we've been using for the game that is on the t-shirt, merch, merch. Um, <laughs> it's a plague doctor mask. It's a plague doctor. Uh huh. And we had a little side note conversation in the Discord about an island that I created for my, my little town. Uh-huh. And the purpose of that little island in real life was that it was a plague community on an island to set apart everyone that was on that island. And I am curious if we can intertwine that somehow into the lore or into the, at least the, the boogeyman story part of it. Like, did you guys know a long time ago that's where they sent all the sick people? I mean, with a big flood like that, you get standing water and stuff's going to grow on it. Right. And if stuff's in there that didn't belong there or, in fact, on the prime material plane in the first place. I love that you use the prime material plane. <laughs> I mean, malaria. It, malaria is a problem whenever you have a bunch of standing water. Uh, oh. Cholera. I, I have a list of about 30 infectious diseases. If you want a list, I can just send it to you. I love you for this cuttlefish. <laughs> so all I'm yes, saying, please. all I'm saying is that if you all decide to uh, come up with a very similar dynamic um, to the thing that Karita is talking about, I'm not going to complain. A sanatorium. Are there even bridges across the river? Maybe that's why one side of the river is kept separate from the other. Indeed. Oh. Okay, so using that oxbow, oxbows can turn back into themselves and create islands in the middle of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you have this, this naturally created island where there is this building mm -hmm. that is currently unoccupied and has been unoccupied for a very long time and there used to be a bridge but no one goes over there anymore it's off limits except the deer well the, there's no beer there's no bridge so the deer can't cross over there unless they swim and we've already established that the current is strong nothing maybe not in the right. off though the deer, deer do swim mm. yeah i know the deer do swim they're fucking weird Nothing is there. Sorry, I have a question for you. I have yep. to. I do have to bounce in a minute. I'm sorry, but I need to know: Is there a ferryman? I mean, somebody's conducting tours. You know, 
hauntings are th- this whole ghost tour thing that's really starting to take off haunted places people love that shit people love that shit i i don't believe we've discussed this and i want to get this before all, most people leave uh what if we decided for the main religion of this town? Oh. I don't think we've decided on it. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think we have. But also, oh, guys, did we just accidentally Silent Hill? No, you yes. d- you, 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 you did. Yeah, you, you, you helped. You helped. All roads, all roads lead to Silent Hill. Cuddle. Cuddlefish has had her hand up for quite a while. Yes. And okay, she what- a break. What if it's not a real, like, disease like what we know of that's existed? What if it's not really a disease at all? What if it's just, like, consciousness and complete awareness as to what's going on? And they say that it's a disease, so they commit them, and they they just, over time, lose their minds until, like, they just mysteriously die and that's where they are and that's what they're giving tours of that the, the oh, river yeah, has, right? has taken it back as like a way to preserve what it's attempting to preserve and it's using it as a cover I have more to build off of this I, I want love it. everybody to recall how the secretions from the thorns and possibly the rose hips or uh you know causing all that stuff yeah so what if what if this institution had their own manufacturing center for creating these medications used from these secretions that they use on the patients well and what why do you think it is that a lot of the kids can see that things are weird it's because they don't kiss the rose yet they don't take the drug and that's why a lot of the younger adults think everything's normal it's because they take it oh the, like a rite of passage is, like a yes. quinceanera Ooh. this is yeah. on, the, on, we... the island, on the island uh occupants hate, can hate... we try and steer away from the involuntary inpatient angle ah. oh yeah sure sorry right. yes of course red card then Thank you. Yep. we will red card that yes okay. Regardless, so, the creepy building doesn't have to be red carded. It just, yeah, just be yeah. mindful. I, I do want to put on my mental health professional hat for a minute here, and like, I am cool with, like, that theme being a, a thing in horror because it is, but also, the way society treats the people that are in that institution should always, always, always be more scary than the people themselves. Correct. Oh, God, yeah. Correct. No, this is, the, I think that that is, help. that's why it's helpful that we're sort of leaning um, towards the, the people who are there are the ones who actually can see what's going on. They have not bought into the delusion versus, you know, these are, these are crazy people and right. they're, they, they're, you know, all those other pejoratives. So, Cuddle, what's going on? Regardless of, of what we do with that, I, I think one of the, the, the creepiest things about that building is that occasionally the walls bleed and it, like, pulsates. It's all horror things of pulsating something. So... The walls or the... Yeah, of the building or... itself or the grounds or something, something around there, I in the the oozing blood stuff, whatever it is. I wonder if if it's something like those trees where the roots are, the trees are old, but the roots are shallow. And so when the wind blows, it looks like the earth is breathing. The deer have got to be either licking up the bleeding trees or the bleeding walls. Oh, God, yeah. This is perfect. I am so happy, like genuinely happy that we are leaning towards a particular thing, a consonance, because this consonance will be useful. I'll put it that way. Yeah, this is all going to get used against us. 
it will be useful. Boy, I'm so excited. Because all of you will get to be part of a grand experiment. And I'm very proud of you. I'm in danger. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So. We're so doomed in the best way. Yes. I think, I think right here is a perfect place to kind of call it. Um, I am going to be. One more relevant question. One more relevant question. Go ahead. Did you bastards let me sit here in portrait mode this entire time and not tell me? <laughs> I thought it was deliberate. No purpose. I just. <laughs> I thought it was deliberate. No purpose. No. Oh no, you're fine though. You're fine. I'm sorry, everyone. I have failed Sparkle Motion. I will reassess my commitments. <laughs> you're you're good, Skillsy. You're good. Um. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to. A kitten plan to a cuttlefish to Ethan to Fractal Rift to Grimfair to Karita to Miss Tori to Numb Dinosaur 83 to Pat to Skeelzy to Tall Kendo to 2% Chunkus to Moth to Richardson J191, otherwise known as Jess and Sycamore Lee. Thank you, all viewers. Thank you so much. You all have killed it. You killed it. We have so much world. So much world. So much. I have so much to play in. I feel like it's Christmas made of horror. <laughs> horror Christmas. It's the horror. best thing in Georgia. It's horror Christmas. And I loved it. You're welcome. So I, I love this. Thank you for giving us this chance. This is great. Yes. Yes. Merry horror miss. Merry horror miss, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> If we just stop happy right here, we horror days. Terrifying world. Yeah, it is. I love it. And it's just gonna get worse. I love it. Give it to me. No, it's gonna get better for you and worse for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's thanks. I hate it. I don't think there are any winners here, actually. Of course, for all of us. And it's gonna be a one that has to round us all up. I mean, you know, that's why we have a weekend and weekday days. Thank you, because I won't be dealing with this many people. I'll be like, I'll, I'll split you up. <laughs> no, I mean, just in, in, the, in the Chaos Goblin kind of way. Oh, weirdly. Yeah, I heard all the cats. Weirdly, chat has been real, very helpful. So chat. Yeah. Chat, chat has chat. a whole B story going yeah, on. Yeah, chat's got a whole B story going on, and I appreciate I chat. So much. So much. Martha and her husband, John, and the pastor, Robert. Like. It's it's amazing. I, Definitely I go back to the vlog. Chat because yeah, chat has been like killing it with the B story and like filling in all those little details and yeah. you you guys have made our world actually a lot richer and brighter and more interesting. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, chat. What if I make my character the brother of Jason? <laughs> and so I could tie in Martha. I could tie in Martha and the whole story. Tie in Martha. There you go. Oh, you better yes. yet. Better yet, Moth. You're the cousin of Jason. Oh. And Martha's your aunt. Ooh. Aunt Martha. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. There might be a little bit of tension between her and your mom. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. So. Thank I love you. <laughs> Martha so might have had a few as well. So one thing that I'll insist on is that uh, keep an eye on the Discord. Uh, that way you can uh, bounce character ideas off each other because this is perfect. And, uh, you know, I am open for questions. Skillsy's there. Tori's there. We're all here. Um, and for right now, I'm going to go ahead and say, well done. And lastly, reality confirmed. Very well done. Yeah. Ugh. I love you. <laughs> that was spooky. <laughs> love you. I love you. And so before much. stream ends, I want to say. Yeah. You want to say. Oh, no. Did it cut out? Oh, no. I wanted and to say. <laughs> and if all else fails, blame it on Martha. Blame it on Martha. Fuck Martha, man. Fucking Martha. New slogan. Making merch. <laughs>
<laughs> we just have a bunch of Martha merch that no one but any anyone here is gonna buy. It's okay. It's gonna be glorious. That's, that'll be great. It'll be great. Moth, I have we'll to have say, you are an absolute natural at this. Yeah, you're gonna do great. Good job. A plus five stars. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love y'all, and I will see you soon. Uh, and hit me up in the Discord. I'm gonna go ahead and exit the call and chat it, uh, yammer it, chat for a little bit, and then I'll sign off. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have you, strange yeah, Pete. any feedback, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> bye, let me guess. Bye. Good seeing you. This is kids. I love you know. each and every one of you. I miss your faces. I miss all your faces so much. Give my love to the family. You know I will. All my love. Okay. I love those people. I love those people so much. They are perfect in every way. Oh, wow. 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 I am so excited. I am so excited. Because we have a whole town. We have a whole history. We have geography. We have social critique. We have the perfect in <laughs> for me. <clears throat> it's just, it's just wonderful. So uh, we're going to take a little bit of a week break so people can build their characters. And then after that, uh, we'll be starting up uh, the proper season, season one uh, with uh, on January uh, 22nd. And then if uh, if we have enough people to run the second game, then we'll do, which I think we will, um, then we'll uh, do the second game on Thursday, January 27th. So it'll be Saturdays and Thursdays. Um, and that'll be in on my schedule on Twitch eventually and also at the end of the credits. So. Whew. Uh, watching this has made me even more antsy for playing Alice is Missing this weekend. Good, good. Thanks for letting chat make NPCs, of course. Y'all, yeah, but actually, a fun fact. Once the literal other half of this game is done, because we're only playing the first half in season one, there's a second half. And that involves a mechanic for spectators, like chat. So you guys could actually affect the action. So. Uh, good job on day zero. Thank you, Rube. I tried my best. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you were here, Mission. I'm glad you were here, 007. And I'm always glad you're here, Chungus. Blame it on Martha and Popeyes. Oh my God. Oh yeah. There's two halves. Cause you guys are just playing the child half. Children grow up. Sometimes. Sometimes. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh-huh. Correct. So. I hope the hours never find your regrets. And I shall see you on the other side. At least it's not Outlast. <laughs>